just a bloke in a bar. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Bloke in a Bar. Before I get started, we have bloke boardies and bloke singlets now available on bloke.shop. Head over to bloke.shop, grab some bloke boardies, bloke singlets. We've also got all new bloke party shirts. That's right, bloke party shirts for Chrissy. The best stuff to wear at Christmas. Be loud, be there. Just get amongst it. Uh, that is at bloke.shop plus if you want to buy more than one so you can buy singlets uh, thong we've got bloke thongs shorts whatever you want to buy them singly you can but also if you want to buy them in a bundle we've got discounted bloke bundles so head to bloke.shop limited supply once they're gone they're gone so if you want uh, a present for Chrissy or you want the missus to maybe just cheekily say uh, maybe go to bloke.shop the bundles are perfect guys so bloke.shop make sure to head there uh, but I'm super excited to uh, Introduce my guest, Siwa Takiaho. Brother, how you been? Yeah, good, good. Thanks a lot for having me. Bro, how's, I mean, talk about a long year. Wow. I mean, so obviously people, a lot of people saw you box, but they didn't realise the whole story in regards to you going to box straight after the World Cup and that. How's the body feeling? Oh, it's not too bad at the moment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you asked me the same question a couple of weeks ago, I would have been, bro, I'm fatigued. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> Jet lag. Yeah. Struggling to like sleep. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been a long year. It's been a long year, especially mm. with the Roosters that season there. Um, obviously got knocked out and then, then the Royal Cup comes in. Mm. Um, yeah. It's always mad going into camp with the, with the, with the lads and that. Yeah. And then the boxing thing pops up um, literally just straight after. So yeah. To fly straight back, so crazy. It was a crazy year, but um, man, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I enjoyed it. What's it? What's it been like? You know, this is essentially for maybe ten years or eight years or whatever. The first end of season that you're not going to go back to the boys of the Roosters. What's that feeling been like? Man, for you? I've, I've, it's like I'm pretty like, excited that I've that I'm going over to the you know south of France. Yeah, but at the same time, I'm a bit like. But the press, um, a bit sad that I'm leaving where, kind of where, where my NRL career and that all started, um, at the Roosters. I, I still got like good mates in that there as well. So, mm. um, the one thing I don't miss is the preseason. They oh. do, brother, it's torture, <laughs> mate. Watching like I like to look at the Instagrams of different teams yeah, preseason. Yeah. <laughs> The head noise on the Roosters is up there with the best of them. Yeah. <laughs> like when oh. you look at the boys' heads in the middle of fitness, you can tell they're stinging. stinging. Like, most of the time you're like just looking at the ground and you're just waiting for like the session to be done. Um, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I think that's one thing that I'll definitely not miss. Um, but just, uh, just putting in that jersey, playing every week with them, yeah, I'll definitely miss. Did you um, get a chance to have a few beers or you went straight over to... Oh England. yeah, like we we had a few beers. Um, wasn't we didn't carry on and yeah, that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we had a few beers and then we literally the following week we started training and head straight down. Um, because we had a trial game. Um, with Tonga, so we had a trial game yep. against France. So we had to head over to um Liverpool mm. pretty early and start getting ready. So yeah, would have. I don't know. I've got a couple more weeks before I head off. So uh, okay, there's still what, time, baby. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, there's a few lads in there <laughs> still around. I'd love to have a few of them Fucking before I head it. off. Fucking oh. So because um, I was going to say, like, you were you were there so long in such a crucial part of such a dominant period for the Roosters. Like, you got to get a chance to say goodbye properly. Surely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Surely. Yeah. I was literally talking with Jared like a couple of days ago, yeah. and he was like, "Man, surely one last, surely. you know, one last drink before you head off, one oh. last farewell." So I was like, "Oh." Maybe see who who's around yeah. at the time. Hundred so, percent. It'll be good. It'll be good. And so, like, let's go to the I guess the World Cup. Um, really interesting position Tonga went in because you were rated number number one on two, 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 <clears throat> and there was huge expectations. Yeah. You know, like, and and rightly so. Your team is really really good. Yeah, yeah. Christian Wolf is a fantastic coach in my opinion. He's I was at the Broncos when I, when he was there. Um, he was like an assistant coach there, and it was like it's strange because like there was a lot of hype around Samoa too yeah. so it was this is this like really interesting I guess dynamic because you guys had achieved so much but then there was a lot of hype with Samoa because of these players late jumped into Jump, it yeah, yeah. Paolo Suali'i all that kind of stuff what was the feeling like internally in the camp with Tonga like um I'll say it's like normal going into you know like um a Tongan camp mm. um but World Cup is like I feel like it's a bit different you know, it's a, um, we're literally going there to try to be the best of the you know, yeah. best in the world, 
and we had a mad squad. You know, we had like a mad forward pack. We had mad edge. Mm. Um, yeah, and then we looked over to the Samoan side. Then they had all Luai and then To'o. Mm. Then Suwali jumped in. They had a mad side too. So it was like, but I think we, we felt like because we've been playing together for since 2017 mm. and we had some young blokes that came in and then as well, we were like, we felt like we were still pretty confident. Mm. Um, but then, man, I say we just choked it. Hey, we choked yeah. in the quarters and we just, it was hard for us to gel together. Yeah. Um, and then you look at the Samoan side, first game against England, they got, you know, pumped. Absolutely pumped, yeah. Pumped and then they end up playing in the finals. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's always mad going into camp. Yeah. But I just wish we could have went further. Yeah. Then. But yeah, but man, credit to Samoa to see them, the first, you know, tier two team to go order to the finals. Yeah. And then beat England as well. Yeah, oh, 100%. I mean, as an Australian, beating England is glorious. Yeah, yeah. Glorious. <laughs> Seriously glorious. Um, and so in camp, what was it like going back into camp? I mean, these camps are like, not that I've ever experienced one, but I can imagine if I was a top guy going to a camp, yeah, yeah. it would be very exciting oh, and the boys the get together. What's it I mean, what's the the first day like? Is it is it everyone's yipping and yahoo and what's it like? Yeah, yeah. Like the first day is like even like we're coming to the airport, like everyone's all cheering, yeah. like, yeah, hey, uh, like we'll, we'll be hanging out with each other for the next, you know, five, six weeks. Yeah. We had like a few drinks at the airport, yeah. um, got blind and then we ended up we, once we got into um England, mm. that's when we met up with all the other boys and then um yeah, we, we had a few drinks, mm. which is like the best part. Yeah, like 100%. Come, everyone coming together and just yep. drink. And then, um, yeah, we ended up at some bar over in, um, <clears throat> oh, in London. We, yeah. Sorry, we, we landed into London. So we some bar in London and we, everyone was just, we were just all drinking and carrying on and all. Yep. It's, a, it's the best feeling, um, yep. literally, when you come into camp. Um, but, yeah, like... It's the best feeling, man. Yeah. Can't really explain it. It's um, it's interesting. Like, it doesn't matter how much science or training or fitness drills you do together, wrestling. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter. You can do a whole preseason. It's yeah, still yeah. not going to get the value of getting on the beers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because everyone's walls comes out yeah. and you can see who they are as a person. Man, you get like, you, you haven't come across like the quiet bloke 100%. and then once you have a few beers with him, <laughs> they're like the loudest. Courage cordial. They've got yeah, yeah. courage all of a sudden, bro. Where's this been? Yeah, you're trying to take the alcohol of them. It's too loud. 100%, bro. There's honestly at least two or three of those in every single yeah, yeah. squad. Every single oh. squad. Um, so, so leading into it, obviously... It was is it, it was interesting for Tonga because you, you ha, was it the first game against Fiji or PNG PNG yeah yeah and there was a bit of a, a I guess a little bit of a scare and and but then it was also asking the question of well is it Tonga didn't play really that as well as they could have or did is PNG just getting much better yeah yeah building into those next few games what was the kind of plan internally were, were you feeling like you guys weren't struggling to gel or were you feeling like that other teams were just getting better. Yeah, I've, like um, when we played France in the trial game, mm. like, we literally pumped them, we yeah. flogged them, and we're like, bro, we're bro this here. is our team, like we're, we're on now. Played PNG, we had so many errors. Yeah. Like literally when we got into good ball, we were trying to score straight away. Yeah. Um, yeah. And not just that, the way PNG plays, bro, they get hit. 100%. <laughs> they get hit, they're like rock, man. Yep. So, um, yeah, we just had so many errors, penalties, like things just wasn't going our way. Yep. Um, and then, but on the other side, like PNG was playing good footy. Yeah, hundred percent. Like they absolutely. scored a few points in that as well. Um, lucky we were, our, our wingers in that stopped like two or th two or three. Mm. No, they would have won that game. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like there's with, with our team, we st we're far off from our best footy. Mm. Um, at at that World Cup campaign. Yeah. So I'm saying like I wish we could have like played better, even the Samoa game. Mm. Like. The way we played is like not really. That's not how we play. Yeah. Um, and some the way Samoa played, they played mad. Hundred percent. And played mad, bro. They forwards, their edge, like every like everyone's all on. Mm. Um, yeah, and I just yeah, I just felt like us. We were in really at our best throughout the whole, whole campaign. Yeah. It's um, I guess the positive, like glass half full, is young guys like Katoa in the yeah, halves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if it, halves is an area where obviously yeah. it's been a bit, haven't had as much depth. Um, just like with Australia now, like we look at our front forwards and we yeah, go, oh yeah, yeah. shit, we actually, we're a bit light now that light, all the Polynesian yeah, yeah, yeah. boys have gone to their country, their heritage. Um, but that's an exciting prospect with Katoa. Yeah, yeah. uh, he's, he looks like, what, he's 19 years old, 18 yeah, years yeah. old? Yeah, yeah. Bro, like, um, 
it was funny because like the when when we went into camp, um, I think I spoke of um, like I spoke of Christian Wolf, and um, the plan was for Isaiah just to come for the experience, yeah, like not play. Yeah. And I think Wolf already told him, "Hey, you, you won't be playing. These are our halves. You'll just come for the experience." Mm. But then he carved up in the in the trial game, yeah. And then he had a run against PNG, played well, yep. and then he literally just he stayed on pretty much the whole. Oh, actually, I think he did his um, knee. So he rested one week and then he was back for the um, Cook Island game. Yep. And then, yeah, and he pretty much just took over um, junior. Mm. It's, I mean, it's just so exciting for you guys because, like, it's been a while since you've had a, a young, yeah, yeah. genuine half yeah. that's 18 years old. Yeah. Like, think about the next 10 years for you. Oh, he's going to be gone. Fucking like, no. He's like at his age, he's already, he already knows a lot too. Mm. Um, he's got a good kicking game. Mm. Um, there's how to like kind of read the game mm. and that as well. So you give him, man, give him to the next World Cup. Yeah. And he's over there, the D Dolphins as well. You'll probably be there with Sean. Yeah. Probably be there, Hubs. Um, and got um, his Christian Wolf saying Christian now Wolf, too. Graham, Wayne yeah, Bennett. yeah. Got Wayne Bennett. They'll be yeah. helping him a lot. Yeah, for sure. What so, I, I was like, I really liked about his game too is that. A lot of young halves don't square up and dig into the line. Yeah, 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 yeah. It sounds so simple. Like, of yeah, course yeah. they should. But it's like, it's not as easy as people it's easy, think. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. To square defenders up and make sure that we get that extra man on the yeah, edge. Yeah. He did it brilliantly. Right, that, yeah. That's what, that's what, when he came to that France game, the trial game, that's what, that's what he was doing. Yeah. So he came off the bench. Wow. And he was literally taking the ball right to the line, play at the back. And then, like, all our trials were more on the edge because mm. of him. Yeah. Crazy. So then we kept them on. Yeah. Um, Good bloke, quiet bloke as well. Oh, really quiet? Yeah, yeah. So. Few, hey, a few more years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, when I came into first grade, I was very quiet. And about three to four years in, I realised I need to mix it up here. Yeah, yeah. And then I started talking shit constantly <laughs> and became a massive pest. Yeah, yeah. So it can come out of anyone. Anyone, anyone. yeah, exactly, <laughs> man. That's what you need. Just give them a couple of years, man. <laughs> um, how was it seeing, um, you know, like, obviously full credit to Samoa. They did what they did by themselves. But in my opinion, I don't think that happens without what you guys did. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's not to take anything away from them, but I think that what Tonga did a few years ago inspired a lot of young Polynesian kids to go, you know what, like, we really can do that. Like, we can do that. What was yeah, it like yeah. seeing, you know, yourself being part of what was so great many years, a few years ago, and then seeing Samoa do it? Yeah, yeah. Did? I've seen what Samoa done um, in that camp, like in that World Cup. Mm. Literally went all the way to the finals and then, but seeing other players that could have played in Australia mm. or, or New Zealand, knew they haven't played for Samoa. Mm. Um, and then we look back as like what we did in 2017. Um, and then we had that good run, but, but you know, lost to England. Then Samoa comes and do it. But it's because it all started from there. Mm. Um, you know, Jace, Jace was one of the first, he was the first one to do it, pull out. And then Andrew Fafita jumped on board. Yep. And then there was a few of us all jumped on board in that as well. And then, like, see the Samoa doing it. You can now see the international game is building, mm. um, which is interesting. Like, yeah. you, pretty sure, like, a couple of years ago, it was always New Zealand or Australia yeah. or England. Yeah. Now, Samoa and Australia. Yeah. Um, and I mean, and that's, yourself, like, it was two points you lost by to Samoa? Yeah, yeah, we lost by, um, yeah, two points. So it's like, it's you two points away. And then England lost by... Yeah, one, by like one, one, one point. Yeah, so you've yeah. got like four or five teams now. Yeah, yeah. That could have been in the final. And literally that World Cup there, it was like, yeah, Australia was a favourite, but then like what we spoke about, like the Ford pack, yeah. it was like, bro, anyone can win that World Cup. Yeah, for sure. Anyone can win that World mm. Cup. Um, I mean, look at the New Zealand versus Australia. Like, yeah, yeah. And they just, <sighs> man, even New Zealand against Fiji and Fiji. Yeah, 100%. Fiji just lost. And it was like a tough, some well. tough calls too. Yeah, yeah. It could have gone their way. Yeah. Um, um, it's, is it, it does it make you feel I guess proud as a, a Polynesian man that you're seeing such a rise in, in yeah 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 like I feel like I'm really proud that like we made that move because mm. um, it didn't just help us it helped some more mm, yeah and I'm pretty sure like Fiji will jump on board in that as well even like other teams um and then I want to see what the next World Cup will look like yeah for sure I'm pretty sure everyone will start like some will have a gun team if <clears throat> Or that Samoa no. plays in Australia, go play for Samoa. Holy, bro. I mean, you've got Tino Payne Haas. Payne Haas, fucking got um, one of the Cowboys on um, back rower. Um, yeah, Nanai. Yeah, 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 him. Oh, right, bro. Right, right. Yeah, hundred percent. We have incredible. a gun side. 
And then they have some injuries in the summer so I just feel their players end up yeah, going home. Tango. Um, Josh Alawai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so it's it's super exciting, super exciting. What's it what's it like? You know, I'm like obviously Australian. Passion is Queensland up, and like Origin for me and the like yeah, eligibility, yeah. it's it's so hard because like I want the Samoan Tonga boys to be able to play for Samoan Tonga, but also play for the state. But at the same time, I don't want it just to be. I don't know what I want. I don't, I don't know what I want. That's the thing because I'm. Mm. What is you know as yourself? Obviously, you were born in New Zealand. What what do you think should happen with Origin? What being someone that what 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 how did you oh you come from warriors but like you would have mates and and whatever and i'm yeah, sure yeah. you'd have a connection to living in uh new south wales for a while what what are your thoughts on origin yeah like obviously um origin i feel like it should be like um players that want to represent their state mm. um for example the Samoan, someone's you know they've, they've got a few players there that plays in the new south wales yeah and then with the rules changing about them you know that shouldn't be eligible to play for origin mm. um but they they want to represent their state you yep. know that's the thing and um i think i think next season they're they're brushing the <laughs> the international games for like the mid-year games yeah i think they're just going to keep it as origin okay which will but i, I still feel like they they should just let them play mm. um origin because they want to represent their state yeah coming to the countryside is a bit different mm. where they want to represent their heritage like their their parents mm. um and that's including myself yeah i was born in new zealand but i want to represent my mum and dad yeah okay i'm um, tonga yeah um it'll be good like if origins mad you know like when you see all their best players from the state going to going up against each other mm. and i think that's why everyone and if none of those boys are playing i don't know what origin will look like yeah be, yeah it'd be interesting i think like the nrl should do like two options like keep the same rules of like if you've been here since you were 13 yeah yeah then w what they're doing right now pretty much um and scrap the tier i don't know about the tier thing like, yeah, yeah exactly I, like get rid of that just What's, brush that like yeah. there's no point on that i don't understand what it means or if then if they if they want to make this the rules stricter make sure samoa tonga all these countries can play around origin and make yeah, it yeah. like a month of footy yeah yeah where they've got an opportunity to play you know like for example do a three game series samoa versus tonga, tonga. yeah like, exactly you know what i mean give yeah, them an yeah. opportunity to be able to play so they can make that choice then. yeah 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 um but yeah I, I i we spoke about it on the podcast quite a bit i'm leaning more towards like you know what scrap the tier system if you've been here before you're 13 yeah 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 then you have a connection to the state you care that, about the yeah state. exactly and also like i think if we want the international game to grow to grow we yeah, can't yeah. stop the it's yeah just, yeah look how look how good that last four weeks of the world cup was yeah was yeah sick. so yeah it's, it's an interesting um it's such an interesting topic really interesting topic but uh takes back to a young young fella obviously born in new zealand born and born and raised yeah yeah born in new zealand born uh, in auckland otara <coughs> otara yeah yeah in otara, so. the great otara <laughs> i uh i think i might have cruised through there once or twice when i was over in new zealand <laughs> um what was it like growing up was it you know pretty typical childhood or was it tough or was it easy what was it like it was tough at times um i think just um like the struggles mm. was was tough um but at the same time, I was used to that lifestyle. Yeah. Um, yeah, growing up, um, bro, like just heaps of mates and that just used to just doing just dumb stuff, yeah. obviously. And that's, when you go to Otai, all you know is like, you know, there's fights, mm. you know, like robbery, like people robbing houses, cars, and all that. So it's probably similar to being like out, like out west or something. Mm. Um, but then growing up, you, when you, you grew up from that area, it's, that's pretty much the life that's the lifestyle there mm. and you get used to it yeah. um so it w wasn't new or anything but now like looking back at it it's yeah. like wow <laughs> and i remember i took my missus there i took my wife there and um drove around otara showing her around and this and that she started crying wow yeah she started crying she was like fuck can't believe you actually come like you yeah. come from here mm. i was like yeah this is home yeah it's it's, it's home for you yeah like, yeah this yeah. is home for me yeah. and she was like man driving through houses like people like there's like crack windows yeah, um yeah. clothes like just hanging around wow. shoes on the power line wow. and she was yeah when i talking to, to otara scorpions i was like yeah this is where it all started for me yeah and i turned one. around and she was like she was crying and i was like why are you crying everything all right she was like i'm just like didn't know this is where you came from yeah well it's like for me for me personally obviously like growing up in australia you've got like 
tough, rough areas or yeah, whatever, yeah. like Logan and uh, and Brizzy. And so I used to think that that was like a, a re- relative. Don't get me wrong. Some like it can get rough in Logan for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, like one of my like a thousand ex misses ago lived in Logan. She's uh, El Salvador. She's Latin. Anyway, and there's like a Latin community there. And so I thought that that was like a, a pretty tough area. But but I could walk that street, go to the train station, yeah, be yeah. sweet, no yeah. dramas. Um, I remember when I walk, I drove through South Auckland for the first time to go train with uh, reserve grade. Yeah, yeah. And now I, I was like, fuck, this is this is actually pretty hectic, like yeah. compared to Logan. So in regards to what you're saying, it was like if you haven't seen it, you, you don't really know yeah, exactly. what it's like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's also interesting at like for all the unfortunate you know young men or whatever they go the wrong way it also builds some really strong yeah yeah exactly you know what i mean yeah young yeah men as well it's like com- coming from like a i'll say like like struggle home mm. and that didn't have everything and then like to where i'm now like i feel like if i wasn't there i yeah. wouldn't be here yeah and that and that's why like i work so hard to try to get here because at the end of the day bro i don't want my kids to like grow up and like struggle you know went through the same way that yeah. i i grew up yeah um and that's why i like moved there to the roost and then like just go bro just give it a crack and mm. see how it goes yeah and then yeah 10 years later crazy bro it's, bro, um, it's the best that's yeah it's just a just the the chances you know when you think back to like almost how naive yeah you yeah were. like you think how lucky could i be to get go to the roosters yeah yeah win premierships play 160 games or whatever Bro, I remember when they when when my manager was like, "There's no club keen for you, mm. only Roosters." So just go there. 2000 for the 2014 and 15 season, 2013. That's when they won the comp yeah, yeah. against Manly, and I was like, <laughs> "How the fuck am I gonna make that side there?" <laughs> they had Sunny Bill, like yeah. Warbo, Aiden Grab, Boydo. Yeah. So I was like, but at the same time, I was like, "Bro, I just want to go and just hang out." Because Sonny was there, Jared Roy Hargraves. <laughs> I was like, bro, send me over there. I'll go there and train with him. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't have the mindset of like, I want to go and play. I just wanted to go and train and say like, bro, I'm, I'm training off these lads. Wow. Yeah. Far out. It's crazy. So I was like, yeah. And then plus they were the only team that offered me anyways, no one else. That's insane. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it shows you it how good funny cause, Yeah, because they're the team that won the comp. I know. So they've they, got such a good eye. They yeah, can yeah, see so something. I was like, oh, fuck. You know, it's 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 weird. Is like there's probably some young fella, like yourself, yeah, that came into the squad this year or last year that thought the same thing. That, that, yeah, exactly. That you're thinking, yeah, you know, yeah. like looking at you boys going, oh fuck, there's fucking yeah, yeah, this toxic fucking <laughs> Jared Hargreaves. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's, that's been that spin out. Okay, so as a young fella, like, were you uh, playing rugby league from the get go? Was it union? Or was it? Yeah, I, I started off playing um, union. Mm. I played union, and then I switched over to league. Yeah. Um, and then when I switched over to league, bro, I just fell in love with the game. Yeah, okay. I didn't see myself going back to Union. Mm. Um, and then I just, yeah, played Otara Scorpions um, and then went into the Warriors development. Mm. And then I just started making my way into the 20s. And then, yep. yeah, signed my first contract with the Warriors. Um, but yeah, it was, I, I missed it there, right? Back, being back in New Zealand. Yeah. Just being along, like, with all, all the lads and all that, um, boys that, Cause like where where I came from, there was like, uh, there was like two or three of us that lived like close to each other. We were in a development squad, uh, so yeah. we we're all traveling. Saliva Harvilli was one of them. Oh really? Um, yeah, yeah. So he he was one of the crew, and there was also we used to always drive down to yeah. training and all, um, play twenties together with Saliva. But yeah, it was yeah, it was mad. It's um yeah, the, the worries. It's worries is a different vibe too. Like I remember when I got there. I was used to the Broncos, whereas like a lot of young single lads just like yeah, yeah, getting yeah. loose every weekend. Just yeah, yeah. Went to Warriors. It was very family oriented, very yeah. chill, car yeah, yeah. sessions, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. The great Manu Vatavai used to. We'd all go to his room, fucking drink up and that. So yeah, room, yeah, we, yeah, hundred percent. Um, so so growing up, like, were you always you know one of the standouts in your team, or was it something that you slowly built towards? No, I I, I literally like I was like one of the smallest. Um, it's crazy because I was like one. I was a half. <laughs> I was a half bro so it was funny I was like even like um like um what's it called like at the at the roosters and they're like I was showing photos to like uh Robbo yeah but I was like bro I was I was literally like a half fullback <laughs> and that but I was t- I was tiny I was small oh, right, and then like bro. most most of all the other players were like better than me and oh, that man. so like bro it took me a while to like put some bit of beef yeah 
you like get you know get try to get like massive and put some bit of muscle on. Yeah. Because um, knowing trying to play like league, it's like very different to you playing union. Yeah. And that as well. So um, yeah, I started off playing in the halves and probably took me a couple of years to put on. Yeah, put on Enough some weight in that. Yeah. I remember uh, when I was first signed with the Broncos, like out of school, I was at like. This is another ex-girlfriend <laughs> from Logan. <laughs> um, so I was at like her house and like her her mum, like there was like a dinner party or whatever. And there was this random dude there and they were just all standing drinking. And then like, he's like, oh, what are you doing next year? I was like, oh, I've signed with the Broncos. And he's like, what? And I was like, oh, I signed with the Broncos. I'll be in there. He's like, you are way too small to play rugby league. So like, I understand the pain of being yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like, I was like 72 kilos or something ringing wet. But I actually think it it kind of like, and I, you know, parlay this into what you, your career is like. It probably helped you massively to get those ball playing skills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, I did. 13. Yeah, it was like once I came to the Warriors. Oh, I came to the Roosters. Then I went like first year I was playing center. Mm. First year I was playing center for the Warriors. No, no, no. For, yeah, so I debuted at center yep. for the Warriors, and then I think Robbo signed me as a center. No way. Robbo signed me as center, <coughs> but then he was probably like. Uh, this he doesn't know how to read <laughs> read on the edge. Maybe just bring him into the middle. <laughs> yeah, so he moved in back like he moved me into back row and then mm. lock. But then lock like now like yeah. lock is not just about hit up, it's about, you know, yeah. ball playing that. But I, I had like skills in that too, like play all started when I was a half. Yeah. Um so that was one of the reasons why he put me in into lock. Yeah. But at the same time I wasn't I wasn't a Richter Radley. I was still <laughs> I was still carrying the ball. And that, oh. but um yeah. Uh, th- those skills back then like pretty much helped me like yeah. try you know get into the team and so at the warriors so you play 20s yeah and then what was do you remember the first time you got called into first grade the squad to train was it a pre-season was it mid- mid-year uh, it was literally like mid-year yeah um i think they had less number i think they didn't have any numbers yeah so they're like they called me and they're like oh do you want to train i was like yeah bro i'm keen 100 i was i was, was, was on a saturday too saturday like saturday morning and i rocked up um, I was like an hour early too. Rocked up with my, <laughs> my old man. My old man was like sitting up on the stand, like yeah. getting ready to watch me. And I was like, so I was happy. I was telling him I was training on first grade. Yeah. Right, and we and it was funny because we had our pose. We had a, like it was like a pose session. Yep. And then um, I don't know how serious like NRL exactly. was. So yeah. I come from twenties. Yeah. So I was like, oh, but I was running into like the pad, and Ben Metalino fully like smacked me, <laughs> and I literally like came off my feet. I was like. <laughs> Holy heck! <laughs> Fool like whacked me, and I was like, yeah. "Oh, sweet!" And he was like, "Ogurus." I was like, "Yeah, yeah Ogurus." <laughs> Playing the ball, I was like, "What the hell?" <laughs> it's it's weird. as a young fella, you you're in this like weird area where you don't want to go too hard. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And disrespect the yeah, old yeah. boys, but you don't want to go too. Don't soft. Don't want to go too soft, and they're like, "Oh, don't bring him back in." <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, and so, did you stay once you went up? You stayed in the first grade school. No, or came back. So no, no. So, so after that training, so it's like I, I went back. I just went there to, to make up the numbers. Yep. But then the following year, I signed first grade. Yeah. But I was still eligible to play twenties. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I wasn't making the seventeen, so mm. I was always just back at yeah. the twenties. Um, what was your first preseason like with first that, grade? Oh, bro, <laughs> like, <laughs> sharks, man. It's like I don't know, but somehow it's like, it was like the worst preseason. Mm. Um, literally got there on the first day. We did a yo. Uh, no, no, it was a beep test. Yeah. Did a beep test, and we recovery was like just walk outside. And like chilled outside and then we walked outside and they had like the cones and they're already set up for figure eights oh. and i was like what's this one? i was actually one of the um guy named sione Losi. um he was at the warriors as well and yeah. i was like bro what is this guy up to and he was like oh we're doing figure eights so we did eight figure eights and then coat hangers oh yuck brother my back <laughs> my lower back was like i was like what the hell <laughs> like, my 20s is like yeah 20s not too bad but that going from like a beep test into figure eight and then yo and like then the coat hangers. Yeah. Uh burn hands down their lives. The next day it was like like com- if I compare that to the roosters, like the way they do prisons, it's like yeah. different. The next day is like pretty much like without the beep test, like then you got like more coat hangers. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, bro. And as a young fellow, you're like, surely we're not doing fitness again today. Yeah, yeah. But I, well, like I just thought that's that's NRL, like that's normal. Yeah, yeah. Because like my first NRL and I was like, sharks. Just get tailed up. Yeah, I'm day. like, sharks, I'm 21, 20. And this is, and if I want to be in a row, I'm going to be able to accept this. Yep, yeah. <laughs> sharks. 
um, okay, so that did you? So you make your debut um, two thousand and two thousand thirteen. Yeah, yeah, two thousand thirteen. So was that thirteen? Was that the same year? Or was that? Yeah, the yeah. Year with, after? with the no, no, it was the year after. <coughs> yeah. So you, you, so the year you make your debut um, for the Warriors, do you remember the call up and that? Yeah, yeah. I was I was literally like I wasn't even eighteen, man. Wow. Like um. Yeah, I, I just went there just for the numbers and that, um, and then we had a captains run. And I think um, Jordan Rowe party. Oh, he was like, so good, bro. Yeah. He was such a good player, man. Bro, he was. I Because, like, when I was at the Warriors, like, I was like, sometimes I'm on the wing. Mm. So they'll put me on the wing with Jordan Rowe party. And I was yeah. like, I was like, bro, he was gun, bro. Mad. Oh, one of the most underrated centers, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, he was so good, bro. So good. So, like, yeah, he was um, captains run. He rolled his ankle. Mm. Um, but I didn't get that, so they waited till the, the next day on game day to see if he's like pretty sweet yeah, yeah. and he woke up the next morning he was like nah I'm no good so then the coach was like oh can I talk to you you're gonna go play centre yeah and I was like oh, okay sweet yeah so I rang my parents and then I told them oh, yeah, I'm playing I'm debuting playing centre <coughs> and then yeah and everything just went we ended up losing mm. but yeah it was a mad experience what, what do you remember from the, do you remember in the changing room going, wow, I'm in first grade or I, on the field? Man, I, I can't really like remember the like, because I, I ended up coming off the bench. Yep. Like someone else came, I think it was Elijah Taylor. Mm. They put him in there mm. um, at centre. So um, I ended up coming off the bench. I just remember them uh, calling my name. They're like, all right, you're up. I was like, shark. <laughs> Grabbed one of the cars and started running down. And then when I ran in, um, um, one of the sharks, I forgot one of the, I think it was Russell Packer. I was like, yeah, bro, let's go, let's go. And I was like, sweet. I went down, took my first hit up. Yep. I think I got like whacked as well <laughs> on my first hit up. I was like, oh, man, just had to try to get into the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, it was the best experience. Loved it. Um, yeah, it was mad. What was it like for, for, your, for your dad or your parents or whatever, like to see where you'd come from? To, yeah, yeah, to bro, where I was going. talking to my mum and she was like, she started crying. Yeah. She was like, man, like, like I was, I wish I'd, they told me a captain's run. Yeah, because then I would have tried to get them to fly over. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, they ended up watching it as well, so they were pretty happy after the game. And so, so they live in Tonga. No, no, they live in New Zealand. Oh, New Zealand. So yeah, that game oh, was in Wollongong. Yeah, yeah, so it was, yeah, yeah okay. we played Dragons. Um, yeah, it's just crazy to think you'd be over playing Dragons like with the you know the everything you'd been through growing yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so so you play that one game and then you don't play you don't or don't play again for the Warriors. The Roosters pick you up like. Were the Warriors not keen on keeping you? Or? It was like, it was pretty weird because like um, before I debuted, um, I had a chat with them. They they wanted me out. Um, so they're like, yeah, you know, you've too many injuries. Um, I don't think you're good enough and that. So I was just, I actually believed them because I wasn't even playing first grade. Yeah. I was like, fuck, it's probably better if I just head off. Mm. Um, and then when I, when I debuted, um, they were keen to like, Resigned me, yeah. Um, but then, like, it wasn't guaranteed that I'll play. Mm. But then, that's when the Roosters came in and like, oh, we'll take him on a two-year deal. Yep. And I was my manager at the time was like, it's probably better off you just get out from the Warriors and go go there. Mm. They're a lot, you know, better team. They won the comp. Mm. Um, you'll probably learn a lot more. And sometimes, like, taking you out of your comfort comfort zone, zone yeah, exactly, yeah, bro. Because I, I was, I, was, I reckon I was just too comfortable there. Yeah. Like. He, I had a few family, like cousins in there as well. And I, yeah. you know, like you just don't want to like, felt like I didn't want to compete with them. Yeah. Because yeah. they're my cousins. I didn't want to hit them or this and that. Mm. So it was like better off I just get out from there and mm. go train there. Bro, the first week when I started training, everyone was bashing each other at the Roosters. <laughs> I yeah. was like, wow. Ah. <laughs> and like, yeah, bro, this is how we train. Yep, yep. I think they had the World <laughs> Cup. That Was it 2013 they had the World Cup? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. And then when Jared and them all came into camp or came oh. into training, bro, he was like animal. Like next level just going. Yeah, he oh, was just like cool. next level bashing everyone. <laughs> you know, him and Sonny going out at each other. And I was like, <laughs> And then I was just like, shucks, like we don't do that. Yeah. You know, at the Warriors. And then you come here. Mm. I was like, wow. Then afterwards, they, everyone's just like, you know, shaking their hands like, yeah, yeah bro, Matt Sish. Yeah. And I was like, bro, this is where I want, this to, be. Is where we want to be. Yeah. What was it? What was it like get, getting over to Sydney? You know, being a kid growing up in Otara, like yeah, yeah. get to Sydney. You're in Bondi. I like beautiful <laughs> weather. What, what was it like? Bro, it was like a dream come true. <laughs> eh? When I landed, I landed like 
yeah, I was traveling like back and forth with the Warriors, like, um, yeah. Just being in Bondi, like, close to the, I was staying in Maroubra. Yeah. So like, we're always going out to the beach nearly every day. Yeah. I was like, bro, this is life. Like, yeah. this is this is mad. Yeah. Compared to being back in Otara, um, so yeah, I man, I love the day. Eh? Yeah. Oh, it's it's the best. It's so, it's such a weird like, <coughs> it's like this weird thing where like Otara will always be home. Like it's home, it's home, yeah, it's yeah. home. But then like at the same time, it's good to experience. Obviously, like, for example, when I was in New Zealand. Like a small thing that like killed me was wearing jeans and a jacket everywhere. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, bruh, I'm, I'm so sick of wearing clothes, shoes, jeans, jacket. It's so cold. It's yeah, always yeah. raining because I'm from the Gold Coast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, but in saying that, I loved Auckland as a city. Yeah, yeah. I always said like, if you could give really good, like Auckland on a good sunny day is as good as Sydney in yeah, my opinion. Yeah, it's mad. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. The viaduct there, the food on the viaduct. Oh my God. Um but yeah, so like, uh, like obviously a lot of Kiwis when they get to Sydney or whatever, like, Sydney, this is yeah, mad, yeah. like good weather. But they and love that. it and they end up like just living here. <coughs> yep. Um, and they just don't see themselves going back home. <laughs> obviously yeah. home's home. Yeah. But that's where you want to like live. Yeah. You know, bring your kids in that up mm. in that area. So. A lot of opportunity too in Australia. Like Heaps of opportunities. Um, it was like New Zealand, it's a bit tougher. Like yeah, when I was yeah, there yeah. anyway, it was a bit tougher. I don't want to speak for it, but that when I was there, like for example, my missus was working in retail and I think she was on like, 12 bucks an hour or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, whereas like in Australia, it's obviously a bit more. So, yeah, so you get you get to, to Sydney. Was it um, was it a culture shock for you? In the sense of like, you know, when you're in New Zealand, obviously you've got your the, the New Zealand culture, a lot of Polynesian boys. Yeah, yeah. Or did you just fit right into the, the Polynesian nah, boys? Bro, it literally took me like, um, actually it took me a year yeah. to try to like blend in yeah, well, yeah. into their culture. Yeah. Um, like coming from like, like come from like back at home, like you're like this quiet bloke. Um, you just try to keep to yourself and yeah. you just you know, do you. Mm. And you come here as like, um, yeah, it was just hard for me to try to blend in. Mm. Um, and I felt like I was always left out, but it was cause of myself. Mm. Like, I wasn't making the effort to like yeah. try to blend in. Um, bro, and I remember like um, I had a, you know, the NRL, like end of the year reviews with the coach. Oh. Bro, and I remember I had a I had a chat with Robbo, and the following year was like my last year. Robbo mm. was like, had a chat, blah blah blah, you know, good year, this and that. The only thing is like, like you draw like on the border, like a circle, and you're like, this is the team, mm. and this is you. Yeah, well. just, you know, just like draw a little circle, and this is you. He goes, I need you in here, yeah, with the team, and he was like, so you literally got one more year to do that. Wow. If not, I'll chuck you on the plane and send you back to Otara. Wow. So I was like, wow. I was like, man, like, how the fuck do I get in there? Yeah, yeah. And that, after that, I was just like, literally, um, I went back home, um, went back home, chilled with family, came back, bro, and I had like, it was probably like my best preseason, like, mm. that 2015, that's when I yeah. um, came out, and then I was like, yeah, I had a mad preseason. <clears throat> I just started, to, right, like I said, I just started talking shit. Yeah. I was like, yeah, lads. What the, I started telling everyone, I was like, the boys would have loved the it. The fuck, what's this dude talking about? <laughs> yeah, right. I was like, yeah, massish, boys, massish. <laughs> started talking crap, man. Yeah. And all the boys were like, bro, this is not Siwa. Yeah, what's going on yeah, here? Yeah, yeah. Uh, even like to Robbo, and I was like joking around Robbo. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. hey, Robbo, can you get us a coffee? <laughs> like this and that, joke around. Yeah, yeah. This and that. And then like, we started like joking around with each other. And then yeah. I think like from there, he was just like, I can see that you're making an effort, effort you change. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, wow. Like, what? That's not me, but like, I just had to, bro, do something to yeah, try to get, in, get there. in there. Yeah. It's uh, it's funny because I had the same experience going to the Warriors. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I, like I've i always been, like, quiet. Back then, I was quiet. And, yeah, yeah. and I always just thought I'd let my actions do the talking. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. If they see me going hard in training and fitness, then I'll just be one of them. And the Warriors actually called the Broncos and were like, how do we get them to, like, get out of his comfort yeah, and like yeah, yeah. get energy and be keen and all this kind of stuff um and i found out about it like uh, quite a while after that the warriors did call the broncos and said fucking you know how do we get out so it's it is a normal thing like when yeah, you, yeah, it's yeah. not it's not as easy as people think like yeah. you gotta um so it's funny because like so when i did go back to the broncos i did the same thing you did i just started talking mad <laughs> shit they used to like you know like we had this thing called like keith of the week yeah yeah because everyone was too scared to dob anyone else in because then they'd get done the week yeah. after so I had to like make stories up of me doing stupid <laughs> shit. Like just make them up on the yeah, spot. Yeah, be yeah. like, oh yeah, I was fucking, I was hooking up with all these chicks on the weekend. Like, yeah, like yeah. had me shit, like just carrying on like dickhead. <laughs> but that's what, and then eventually exact same thing. You you become one of the boys and it's yeah, all yeah. good. But right, actually like, come from New Zealand and to Australia, like, like to the Roosters, like, you're just like, fuck bro, like, 
how do you try to blend in with them? Because mm. it's like, it's it's mixed. Where over there was like mostly all Polynesian. Yeah. And yeah. then everyone there just all act the same. Yeah. Um, and over there is like most, you, the boys that you're playing with in first grade, played with them in 20s. Mm. And you come here, it's like you got Aussies, you got yeah. some Islanders. Yeah. And you're like, fuck, you got to just try like, bro. And then that following year, I just started, bro, talking crap, man. <laughs> So wow. good, and like it was funny because Orbe was my roomie. Oh no and way! Then, yeah, so he was always my roomie. I think they like they, yeah. Somehow they just put us together mm. for like for a couple of years. So me and that dude always just talk smack. Eh? Like, oh really? Yeah. The great Orbe. It was, it was it was mad, bro. I wonder whether they did that intentionally to try to because he's obviously such a likable bloke. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. Try to get they're yeah. like oh because people were like surely you don't get anything out of these two you're like. You know, both quiet blokes. Yeah, yeah. Roomy, but like, once we go into the room, we just start Talk like, shit. yeah. He's always talking about golf and stuff, <laughs> man. I was like, from New Zealand, I was like, bro, I don't know any of these. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I once um, I roomed with a when I was in New Zealand playing reserve grade. I roomed. I, I've forgotten his name. Apologies, but he was like a gun reserve grade, and I think he was from Fiji. Yeah, yeah. But he didn't speak English. Oh, no. <laughs> so like we would just be lying there, <laughs> just trying to talk to each other, and like he could barely speak English. And I'm going, bro, well, I don't know what's going on here. He was he was a good player, like just just didn't like fuck. He spoke broken English. And yeah, was yeah. Like, oh, sweet, but he was a nice guy. He's a nice guy. Um, okay, so 2015. Um, obviously, you make your debut. Um, and you guys. You, you you basically replaced Sonny Bill pretty much in a yep. sense of you know he he moved on or whatever was that a bit weird for you in the sense of like not not weird like in a negative way but like that's Sonny Bill like it's a pretty big shoes to fill yeah yeah uh, or you didn't really think of it like that yeah I didn't like, really think about it eh? like um I didn't think of a, like me coming to the Rooster to replace Sonny mm. um obviously Sonny moved on and mm. you know, he had other plans um bro, to be honest bro like what for me, it was just like, I was just trying to crack it, eh? Yeah. Just try to crack the first grade. And like, I was hoping that I could play in 2014 because I wanted to play alongside him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but then he ended up moving on. And then, um, but then I was like, wow, I'll get you play against, um, play alongside Jared. Yeah. Sam Mo and all them. Um, yeah, it was, um, yeah, I didn't really think of like me replacing him. Yeah. And all that. Or like worried about the expectation of yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm going to be as, yeah. do this or that, that Sonny does or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Um, Okay, so that first year, and you come in and, and you, do you remember your first game for the Roosters? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we played um, Cowboys over yeah. in Townsville, bro, and we literally, like, we pumped them. Oh, what? Pumped them. I think it was, like, we caught, like, 40 on them. Oh. And that as well. Um, yeah, we ended up, yeah, we won. Um, for, for the boys, we had, like, a few drinks and then afterwards. Yeah. And I was, like, I was just, I was carrying on because I was celebrating my first <laughs> win. Yeah, the debut. Yeah, yeah. My debut, my first win. The club, and yeah, then yeah, as yeah. well, I was, like, yeah. Um, but, yeah. The was, mad yeah, cow. What's that? The, the Mad Cow? <laughs> Went there afterwards, eh? Yeah, oh, bro, it's the best. The Mad Cow, is it the bank as well? Uh, I mean, look, I've had some good nights out in Townsville. <laughs> I mean, every footy. If, yeah, yeah. I, feel, I kind of feel like you're not an NRL player if you had a good night out in Townsville. Nah. Bro, like, you, you know you're going to Townsville, bro. you got to pack the jeans in that as well, 100%. bro. you got to make sure you get those jeans in. And you know the coach always says, guys, fucking don't perk, you know, yeah, like, yeah, don't yeah. perk your jeans for your footy boots, yeah, boys. Yeah, like, yeah. Focus on the footy. Um, and everyone's like, yeah, 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 sweet, sweet. Yeah, yeah, sweet. The team's <laughs> the first one in. <laughs> um, okay, so, yeah, 2015. So, so you just went, Roosters went minor prem, 13, 14, 15? Yeah. I think three. Did you win the minor premiership that year? Uh, yeah, oh, 115. Yep. Um, and then 16, I don't know, the Mitch Pierce thing happened and he was out. And so I don't think he just went well. Sixteen at all? I could be wrong. Oh though. yeah, I think sixteen. <coughs> yeah, I think sixteen is when bro, we were like, we didn't even make the top eight. Yeah, it was one of your worst. Like, I think yeah, like it was like one of the worst. Yeah, 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 yeah. What was that like going from the high of? You know, great it was fifteen. Like, yeah, yeah. Like we got to a point where it was like towards the back end of the year, like we knew we couldn't make top eight, and it was just like you got to a point where you're like, fuck, just want our season to finish. Mm. Um. Yeah, because like you come from like 2015, like we were pretty confident. But then we lot, we got in Hammond from Broncos up in Brisbane. Mm. And then you go to 2016 and then we ended up, you know, not making that top eight. Yeah. And we were like losing to the team like in the bottom eight too. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was like, you know, that was, was probably like the worst year that I've had, like, um, you know, being at the Roosters. Yeah. Um, I can't remember what happened in 2017. We had a good run. Oh. 
17. So the Roosters in 2013 all the way to 2019 came either first or second, except for 2016. Oh, okay. So 2017, second, made the prelim. Oh, that was Melbourne Storm's crazy year, wasn't it? Yeah. 2017. Yeah. So Melbourne Storm probably, I think they knocked you out in the semis. No, uh, I think the Cowboys did the Roosters in the semis. Oh, the Cowboys. Oh, yeah. Oh, they went yeah. on that mad run. Was that Allianz? It was a Allianz, massive upset. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, Michael Morgan. And they Morgan. played, um, who did they play? Melbourne, eh? Yeah. In the yeah, finals. In the finals. And yeah, yeah, that's Melbourne. right. Um, yeah, that was a massive upset, Cowboys. Do you remember that game at all or not? It's fuck, it all blurs into one. Fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'd, what's um, that's when like Cowboys just made the top eight and then they just went. Well, they they were they did they had their uh, Mad Monday plan. They yeah, thought they yeah, were yeah, done. yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's such a dominant period for us. Is it like it's just crazy to think that only one year you weren't either first or second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you you play obviously fifteen, you play sixteen. When did you re-sign a longer-term contract? Um, like, every time I was, like, re-signing, it was always, like, two years, two years. Yeah. Um, so after the after the 14, so only, yeah, so 14 and 15, and then re-signed me for another two years. Yeah. Yeah, so then I did the 16, 17, and re-signed for another two years. Mm. Um, yeah, so that was pretty much it. It was only, like, just two years, two, two years. years. Two years. Um, and so the 2000, uh, so what's interesting is that, like, I mean, from 2015 all the way to 2020, except for one game with New Zealand, you, you've been playing with Tonga. Yeah, yeah. So you've like, you know, you've been, it, like, it's not like you just came because of the success. Like, yeah, you, you've yeah, been yeah. there from the get-go. So yeah. is that something, do you remember the first time you put on that Tongan jersey? And yeah, it was like, um, I wasn't even, I don't think I was even playing cup. Um, like, when I, when I landed here and they called me, they were like, oh, we've got a game over in PNG. <laughs> um, and no one put their hand up to play for Tonga at the time. Oh, really? It was over in PNG. So, like, the original players, they pulled out. So, they were, like, looking for numbers. So, yeah. I was like, bro, I'll pull my hand. I was like, bro, I'm keen. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll come. Like, mm. go to PNG and just go put the Tongan jersey on. Went mm. there. We ended up losing. But it was a mad experience. Crazy, like, to think that you've gone from losing to beating Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, like, two, two yeah. years or something. And there's, like, there, was a f there wasn't much players, like, that played that game that are still there now mm. um yeah what what's it what's it been like seeing the development like because you've been there from a time where people would you could barely get a team together yeah 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 exactly to you know being a powerhouse essentially yeah. what, what what was what's the early days like what was it compared to now all right like back then it was like even like the pay in that yeah pay i think we we're getting like 30 dollars or something 30 or 50 50 dollars Wow. Um, so just basically lunch money for the... Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was like... The um, thing is, like, everyone just wanted to play for Tonga. Yeah. Um, we didn't have a good side at the time mm. in that as well. Um, like, we had a f like few players that were playing like, Tonga. And, oh, I played for Australia and New Zealand. Mm. And then compare it to now, like, yeah, one, like, the money's gone up um, too. But, like, the, I feel like the young generation are, like, coming up. We've got mad young players... But they're choosing to play for Tonga, yeah. and that and that's what's um that's what's exciting for us because we got like all these mad players, um, that are choosing to play for Tonga, yeah, and that as well. So it's just um I think like when you get older, I, I mean I'd assume it's going to be something you probably look back on and go that might be one of my most yeah, yeah. proudest things. I yeah, mean obviously exactly. premiership is proud, but like a a lot of young Tongan kids, especially in Tonga, like there's not much opportunity nah. for young fellas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like, every time we go back, they're always like like we're trying to like um. Like we're trying to like build the rugby league over in Tonga. Yeah. Um, because if not, like man, all those young kids will, just, will be on the streets and start yeah. doing other stuff. Yeah. Um, so if, like if we can try to build the, the league, the game over in Tonga mm. and try to bring them over here and have like a couple games against other teams and give them opportunities will be good. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. And like create a link and a pathway yeah, to yeah. get to Australia. Get to, or yeah, exactly. Zealand. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, um, so 2017 rolls around though. Yeah. What What was the feeling like when you'd heard that Damalolo had said he's coming? Uh, I was like, so I was I was already named in the Kiwi squad. Yeah. Like, so, um, well, he was the coach at the time. Um, no, not Steve Kearney. Kidwell. Yeah. Like Kudwell rang me straight after when my season, when we finished, and he was like, hey, bro, like, you know, you made the Kiwi scene. And I was like, yeah, sweet, man, thanks, man. And then Tonga, Christian Wolfram calls me, and he was like, hey, bro, like, I'm, 
You know, I just want to let you know we're trying to get all you boys together. Um, you want to play in the time? I was like, nah, I'm 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 going Kiwis. Yeah. So I was like, and he was like, are you sure? And I, yeah, yeah, sorry, man. Like, like I've always wanted to play Kiwis. Mm. And then I hung up, and then I took off to Fiji, like just for like a week, yep. get away before I go into camp. And then like on my way back, like my social media stuff was popping off because Jace chose to go to Tonga. Yeah. And I was like, what the? I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. I was like, looked on my Facebook, everyone was tagging me. I was like, you next? And I was like, bro, what the hell? <laughs> I was like, nah. And then when I landed, when I landed into Sydney, bro, I swear, I landed in Sydney, like I had all these missed calls from like Christian Wolf Graham. Um, like nothing from Kiwis, I think. And I was like, bro. So I rang Jay straight away and I was like, bro, is this, is this real? Are you going to Tonga? Yeah. Because even he was like, I don't think he was told that he was in the Kiwis, but his name was like, he was going to play. Yeah, yeah, he was in the, anyways. Yeah. I go, bro, you going to go? Yeah, I want to go to Tonga. And I was like, fuck, true. And I was like, yeah, yeah. But he didn't like say like, bro, come. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, sweet, sweet. Yeah, all good. Bro, hung up straight on, phones could well. And I was like, brother, I'm going to go to Tonga. <sighs> And he was like, bro, he started like, he, he was blo like, Blowing he was angry because he yeah, was like, yeah. bro, I've already got the squad. I've already told players they're not in it because, and then you come and do this. Yeah. And I was like, and he was like, you know what, fuck, you know, this repeat, this, this and that. Yeah. Like, we're never going to pick you. I was like, fuck, I'm sorry, bro. Like, yeah. But I feel like my heart's over here. Yeah. With Tonga and that. And he was like, sweet, all good. Bro, hung up. And then an hour ago, then Manu Ma'u done the same thing. Yeah. It was me, Manu Mau, and um, Dave, um, Dave Fusitua. Yeah. We were the three that got, that was in the team. Yep. So then like, yeah, I ran those guys. I was like, bro, you guys go. I'm going with Chase. Yeah. And he was like, bro, I'm coming. <laughs> 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 but bro, I'm going to, what did you say to um, Goodwill on that? And I was like, bro, I just told him this and that. I was like, bah, sweet, I'm going to call him. Yeah. And then he comes in. Dave Fusitua did the same thing. Oh. Right, the next thing you know, a couple of days later, we're all here in Sydney Airport getting ready to fly to NZ. Yeah, wow. Um, oh, no, sorry, we were, like fly to Cairns because yeah. that's where we had, and then we were just like, bro, lads, look at our team. This is us, bro. Well, what was the feeling like? Because as, as I said, like you'd already been playing for Tonga. And yeah, so yeah. W w the decision of like when, when Kid World calls you and says, I want to play for Kiwis, were you kind of like, well, like, you know, the Tonga set up, is it going anywhere? I don't know. Is it building to anything? Like, what was the the? Uh, I, I literally didn't even think about Tonga. Yeah. And that I've always had a dream, like a oh, goal, like I play. I want to play Kiwis. Yeah. You know? And um. And at the time, Tonga, like, I don't like that. They don't really have good players. Mm. Um. But then when I seen Jace jump over, bro, and then the way he was explaining to me, like, bro, I just want to go represent my my parents. Yeah. This and that, and I was like, because we had like probably a good half an hour chat at the airport while I was waiting for my bags to yep. get off. And I was like, bro, nah, frick, you all right? Yeah. And then, yeah, once I got off, then I just was right straight on to that. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's just, it's what a moment. Like, what it, like, yeah, yeah, think exactly. about that impact. Like, the, the the phone call, you know, him saying to you and then the knock, then the, the domino effect. Yeah, yeah. And then for feeder, obviously, he yeah. leaves Australia and goes to Tonga. It's like, I played ag I played against Andrew Feeder, but like I wasn't really like close with him. Yeah. And then um, Christian, and then I ran Chris. Chris, um, and I go, hey, bro, like, just want to let you know, um, I want to be in your Tongan team. <laughs> and he was like, bro, he was like cheering. Yeah, he was like, no way, are you serious? Yeah, bro, yeah, sweet. And I go, yeah, I think my mum was gonna call you probably in a sec as well. And, and David was tour, and he was like, bro, he was happy. Yeah. And then he calls me back like two hours later and goes, Andrew Feeder's coming too. I was like, bro, yo, we got a gun squad. Oh, right. Yeah, and I was like, sweet, man. Crazy moment in rugby league. Like, yeah. I still remember it. And so, like, that year, obviously, like, 2017, you know, the culmination is obviously beating Australia. Yeah, yeah. What was that? What was, like, going into that game, was it we, we want to make history? We want to, or, yeah, was, yeah. or was like, it just another game? Yeah, because, like, we, we played, um, <clears throat> uh, we played Great Britain mm. um, before that, and then, like, we won. So we off, we just created history then, yeah. And then we had like, um, like we had a few bears, but we didn't get because we knew we were playing Australia, yeah. And then um, I remember Jace was like, lads, like um, let's have a few, let's enjoy the win, mm. but our main one is next week, yeah. And they were like, fuck, bro, all the boys are pumped, eh? And all the boys are like, yo, let's go, G, let's yeah. go. And he was like, yeah, we got you know we got Australia, obviously, um, but you, you guys don't know what it means if we beat them. Yeah, I guess, wow. bro, you, oh, fans will go crazy in that as well. Um, 
and then yeah coming into that like to the game and that like we weren't really nervous because like we just looked around and like bro look at our players like um yeah we're like Jay said Dave um on a and like Andrew Fida, we had like Tavita Pangai, yeah. Joe. Like we had a gun forward pack and we yeah. were like, bro, we can beat their forward pack. Mm. It's just the backs and that is the only concern. But we had Jennings. Yeah. We had Michael Jennings and, uh, in that as well. Stags, young Stags. Stags yeah, yeah. Young, so yeah. we're like, bro, we can match these dudes. Yeah. And that um, yeah, bro, once we beat them, bro, it was like bro, I started crying, bro. Yeah. I started crying after the game. I was like, ah, bro, it was the best feeling ever. Yeah. Literally like nearly the whole, all the whole team was started crying. All the players, yeah. um, like Junior Paulo, you know, when they beat England, mm. like there was like a clip of him like crying and he was like, yeah, yeah it's like, bro, that feeling there was like probably the similar to the feeling when we beat Australia. Yeah. Oh, bro, it was the best. And we literally just partied throughout that whole, the whole oh, weekend, man. Far out. <laughs> yeah. Was it, was it, when you think back and you think of some of those play, Australian players that were playing in it and you go, fuck, there's some pretty great players. Yeah, in yeah. That like they had, they had a mad team. Like, um, they had, you know, like Josh Papali was in that, that side as well. Yeah. Um, I think that's when Peyton Haas started coming into the scene and it was just mm. Trell Mitt. Big Trelly yeah, Mitt. Yeah, Trelly Mitt was in there. Teddy. Um, yeah, they had a, they had a gun side. Yeah. Um, but like, we just had a game plan. It was like, bro, we dominate their forward. Yeah. Their backs won't be able to like do anything, you know, at the back of it. So we're mm. like, bro, let's just dominate their forward pack. Let's yeah. Just go off it. Um, and that's pretty much, that's all we did throughout that whole 80. Yeah. Was that, was that the same, what year was <coughs> the, the World Cup where you just lost on the buzzer to, to England, or not on the buzzer, but lost England in, in Yeah, that was, oh, that was a 2017. That 17. was the World Cup. Was yeah. that before or after that game? No, nah, and then we beat Australia 2000 and, 19 19 yeah 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 okay so okay so the 19 was the the culmination yeah all. yeah but the 17 is when it started to be like oh shit yeah yeah do you remember that game against england because that was england i mean the tongan fans it turned out for that was i've yeah, never yeah. seen anything like that i think like once like um <clears throat> obviously with jace like right like every tonga knows jace mm. um especially over new zealand that as well yeah. so like once we got into new zealand bro we had all the fans all at the airport mm. um Bro, they were doing parades and all the stuff and that. So like, um, what's it called? When when we played England, there's like, like we seen our photos. It's like all red, yeah, all red all around, and there's like a little section just the English, <laughs> all the English fans. But our fans are like the best. Like they sang our national anthem, yep, and England's national yeah, anthem, wow. and wow. then um, yeah. Like I think Sam Bridges came out and said, "Bro, it was like one of the best." James Graham as well. Oh, James Graham, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. He came. Out, I was like, "Bro, it was like one of the best." Yeah. Um, yeah. I would have been mad if we won it too. Did um, Fafita knock it on, or was it a rake? I reckon it was a strip. Bro. Oh. I was, <laughs> bro, well, I, I I wish the ref just just went upstairs, bro. Just go. I yeah. oh, will just go upstairs and see. Let's knock on, knock on. That was that was the one thing that I thought, like, bra. Just go upstairs. Go upstairs, bro. Like, give it, at least look at it. Like, yeah, yeah, at, at least just play. look at it and if it's like, knock on, sweet. Yeah. Knock on. Yeah. Fuck, what a crazy game that was. Because I felt like we had that bit of momentum. It was, you were down by like 20 or yeah, something yeah. and you scored all three yeah. tries real quick or something like that. And they were like, wow. So. It is what it is. But yeah, it is what it is. It is what it is, baby. Um, okay, yeah, so 2019, you beat Australia. Um, and then like, this is in the middle of your 2018 season at the Roosters. What was that season like for you guys? Because like, it's the first year Teddy gets there, Cooper Cronk gets there as well that that year as well. 2018. 18. <coughs> yeah. Oh yeah. When did Teddy was Teddy get there? 2018. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And Cronk got there. Yeah yeah. What was the feeling early on that you've got something special here? Like yeah in, yeah yeah. I was like um. Especially like when you got those two coming in, mm. um, yeah. Obviously, like we lost Percy, um, but yeah, like when those two came on, um, like they literally just changed everything. Mm. Um, and I remember we had a team meeting, and it was like the first team meeting with you know with the lads, and Cooper stood up in the front, and it was like, "I'm here to win you guys a comp." Wow! Right, and I, I, I was usually sitting. I always said to Dylan Napa, so like from. When I was playing on Napa 2015, we we're like, bro, we're gonna win at 15. Yeah. Obviously, then we lost. And then when he stood up there and he goes, bro, I'm I'm here to win you guys a comp. Wow. And we we're like, fuck. <laughs> and he goes, 
bro. Me and Napa was like, we had goosebumps. We were like, fuck, no way. Yeah. This dude just said that. And he yeah. was like, yeah, I'm here to win you guys a comp. All you guys do is just do your job and I'll do mine. Oh, wow. Yeah. Bro, and he just kept it short and simple and that was it. And we were just like, we left, like literally when the meeting finished, mm. everyone stood up, like, gosh, shock yeah, coops, yeah. shock coops. Yeah, yeah bro, good. that's us. Bro, and then like, fast forward, like a couple months later, like we ended up winning the comp. Oh, um, and then we went back and spoke about when Cooper stood up in the front and said it. Yeah. Um, bro, yeah, it was the best feeling. We were just like looking at our rings like that's incredible. every day. Yeah, That's incredible. It was the best. And so like leading into that finals, like what a crazy finals that like it ended up being, especially the grand final. Um, so Coops was under a massive injury cloud. Yeah, yeah. Like to, to think that he was the one that said, I'm going to win your comp. Then yeah, yeah, exactly. he may not even play. He's basically got a broken scapula or something like that. Was it like, how did Trent manage to keep that crazy hype that was a, like the crazy media that was around Cooper Conk? Yeah, yeah. Because that, that, that had a, there was a chance that that could derail you guys and make you worried about, yeah, oh, yeah. Is he's not going to play. What was it like on that? Yeah. I remember like when, when that incident happened um, and they told us like, you know, what actually happened and you're like that massive ass crack. And then we're like, oh, there's no way this dude's playing. Mm. Um, and then he had like, I don't, yeah, I'm pretty sure, I don't know if he had surgery or he had to like go do stuff in that tour. But us players were really like, we're already thinking, oh, this dude's not going to play in the grand final. Mm. So we just got to move on. Um, yeah, and then we, so we, we, did, we, we literally didn't see Cooper till like three days, you know, before kickoff. Yeah. So we like, because he was busy doing his stuff and all the media was out. So I think he was like in, I don't know, six or seven in the morning doing his part and then he's straight off before we even get there. Wow. So we didn't really like see Cooper. Okay. Um, was that to avoid media? I think he was trying to avoid like media, um, but I think he was just, he just wanted to focus on himself. Okay, yeah. And that, and not get like everyone coming in like, hey bro, uh, how you going? Like, you know, everyone's always like, would you be sweet this yeah, week? Yeah, you're going to be sweet. What's going on? What's <laughs> yeah, happening with Charlotte? Right? you playing? <laughs> so like, when we go in, like, I think Coops will be already gone. Yeah. Um, and it's literally like three days before kickoff. Um, like, um, yeah, we, we had a meeting and it was like, oh, Coops just wants to have a chat with us. And like, and you're like, yeah, sweet. What we're expecting is Coops is not playing. Yeah. So we go in there and like sit down, like, you know, we're like, fuck. Come in, this dude's not playing, bro. Yeah. And then he comes up and he stands up and he's like, yeah, lads, I think you guys all know, like, you know, um, with my back and that, this and that. And um, I met a few people and they've been trying, like, new things and that. Um, but I'm running out with you guys this Sunday. <sighs> Lad, yeah, we're all cheering. We all started cheering. We're like, fuck, no way. This dude's, bro, let's cheer enough that. We all got out. Yeah. Bro, you're a beast, bro. You're a beast, bro. <laughs> and all boys like, bro, I got you. Like, everyone said, like, bro, I got you, got you, man. Mm. But then, like from there, it was like we just had to like just keep it on the low, yeah, and not get it out there, yeah. And then on grand, like literally until like an hour before kickoff, that's when no one, that's when it got announced, yeah, yeah. Like an hour before kickoff, yeah, Coops is playing, crazy. Um, but yeah, uh, we've been really good with that, like keeping everything on the low. Mm. Um, Roos is a great, great, yeah, at that. yeah. Roos is really good at that, like really good at controlling what does or doesn't come out yeah, of the company, yeah. Uh, yeah. out of the um, the club. And so with the grand final, this is obviously against uh, the Raiders. No, Raiders was 19 or 18? Yeah, we had Melbourne 18 and then Raiders Melbourne 19. 18. Yeah. So Melbourne 18, like yeah. we were talking about before, like one of the best first half performances from a yeah, grand yeah. final team. Yeah. And against such a, a good storm side as well. Yeah, exactly. And I just thought Kiri was so good that yeah. game. Far out, he was good. What What was it, I guess, do you, what do you remember from that grand final? Uh, like literally... First thing is like kickoff. I was I took the first hit off oh, of kickoff. So I was like sitting up when we ran out. I was just like, ah, we're in a grand final, bro. My ears started like ringing. It was like no yeah, way. like I couldn't really hear the boys. Yeah, like all the fans in that. Um, and we knew we were receiving. So I was yep. like taking the first hit up. Mm. But the person I I um bro that stood out was like yeah Kerry, but bro Jazza, even Jared. Yeah, the bloke was like. Just teeing off at everyone. Yeah, wow. Bro, it was like just folding everyone. Yeah. I was like, shucks, this dude's <laughs> like an animal, bro. Loves it. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, it was just the best. I felt like we just, we were just on, like in the groove. We were just like, um, our defense, we were just on. Mm. Um, we, had, we literally had the best week of training. Leading oh, up really? To it. Yeah. Wow. Even though we were in the favorites, but like <clears throat> we had the best week. We even got like Joey off his edge start combining with like Teddy and Latrell. Oh wow. And that um 
Yeah, it was we had right, the best week. It sounds wild to think yeah. Joey Manu was one centre and Latrell was the other yeah, centre. Yeah, exactly. And Teddy was the fullback. Back. That's outrageous. <laughs> wow. Um Okay, so yeah, so you win so you win that grand final. What you, like are you thinking how? How did like yeah. from a guy that could you know, no other club wanted you. Yeah, exactly. You know, everything had happened all the way to a grand final. What was it feeling like? Yeah, bro, it was the like best feeling like when um What's it called? Like, I think it was Jake Friend when he just like started running backwards with the ball and yeah. he threw it on the crowd. Yeah, but I just started cheering. I was like, I just won a premiership. Yeah, but I was I was literally looking for my family straight away. I was yeah. like looking for them, and I saw my wife ran over to her and I started hugging her. Yeah, and I was like, she was like, bro, you've done it, you've done it, and I was like, bro, crazy. And I was like, yeah, and then after that, I just started. I just went to the lads and I was just like, yeah, just started hugging everyone there. Eh? Yeah. Um, just like looking back from like where I come from until like, mm. and then winning like two premiership rings. Yeah, it's like so wild, bro. So wild. Does it, does it feel real yet? Like in a sense of like two NRL premierships. I like back bro, to back. Nah, not really. Yeah, yeah, not really. Because they're so hard. It's to so get. hard. Like even like just winning one. Like, just, I would have yeah. been happy like if I just won one. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then going back to back, um, sucks. Yeah, best feeling. And so, when you win that first uh, premiership, w- like was C- Cooper just just spent? Like, was he just fucked? Like, from the adrenaline and everything like that, or yeah, I love, um, or did he did he go somewhere privately to fix? Like, you know what I mean? Like, what was he? Did he just sit there with some ice on, or after the after the grand final? Yeah, after grand final win, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that um, I think Robert took him off like three or five minutes before. Yeah, yeah, like. We already knew we won the game. Took yep. him off. Um, yeah, so I there's think, pictures yeah. of him and he was he looked fucking. Yeah, bro. Like we literally like we like boys are trying to like fully grab him and hug him. Oh. Bro, it was like bro, groups. <laughs> it was like everyone was like bro, you're a beast, man, you're a beast. <laughs> and it was like yes, yeah. like just shaking everyone's hand and it was going around to all like the Melbourne boys like shaking their hand. But boys wanted to like full grab him and like yeah, hug him, man. Yeah. Um, and then afterwards he was just like bro, he was in a sling like. Even though Mad Monday in that day. Eh? Oh, so he's ch- fucking like, hell. Like he came out a few beds, but then I think he had like had to go and get a surgery. Oh, he got surgery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's and still then, a, an effort to get to Mad like. Yeah, Monday yeah, exactly. Like right, it's an effort like to come play. Yeah. With that injury, um, but yeah, bro, he's a ledge, bro. That dude, eh? Yeah, w- incredible what he did. Incredible. Um, so yeah, you win win that premiership. Who, who was best on ground off the ground? After the Off game. Off the ground? Yeah. Oh, who else? Victor Riley. Oh, really? So he did <laughs> charge? Okay, okay. Because I heard whispers he, he's, he's, that he didn't charge long, though. He charged for a short, short Oh, bro, just time. that short period of time, bro. <laughs> it's, it's mad. <laughs> <laughs> just that short period of him and, him and Napa. Oh, really? oh, big the big fella. Bro, those two. He's a goat. That's all you need is just those two in the room. And <laughs> yeah. like, you just give them like, a couple of days where they'll take the cup. Good to go. Yeah, um, they're the best. So, so yeah, you, you win that, and then like going into the next year, is there talk about like guys? <coughs> it's done. It's over. We go again. Yeah, yeah. Or was that was that the chat going into? Yeah, the next yeah. Pre-season? It was literally like once we got into um, preseason, um, like few of the boys in that were still like had a couple of weeks off, and then but it's once we came in, it was we started talking about the history mm. of like the last team that went back to back, and we're like, all right, let's. We're gonna be the next team to do it, mm. and um, yeah, and we literally just had like the, um, I think we had like similar side to like last the uh, to the 18s. We were like, mm. fuck, we can go again, um, and all we needed, Coops, Coops just pretty much said the same thing. Like, we can go, we can do it, mm. um, yeah, and all we just do is just set our mind to it, go after it, yeah, and that's exactly what happened. Man, crazy, and so that yeah, 2019, <coughs> this is obviously the same year with the um. That you beat Australia, so like, what a year! Like, it's yeah, just yeah. a crazy, crazy year for you. Um, but leading into that grand final, obviously playing the Raiders, and I guess like there was just a lot of fanfare around the Raiders because they were the underdogs, the underdogs they were the, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, up yeah. the milk, all that kind of stuff. And uh, what I, it's not, I don't think it's widely known. Um, like, it is known; it's public, obviously, information. But Kiri did his ankle pretty badly, didn't he, before that grand final? Yeah, yeah. And he yep. was supposed to, he was out for like six to eight. Was supposed yeah, yeah. to be out for six to eight weeks. Yeah. Um, and so it's like so crazy that like you had Cooper do what he did. Yeah, yeah. The next year, Kiri does his ankle. Yeah, yeah. Um, what was it like leading into that grand final? Like, um, 
obviously like it wasn't like Kerry one wasn't as big as like yeah, Cooper's. For sure. Um <coughs> I don't know what, what he did to get back in there mm. um and play. But like um I don't know, somehow we were just like we we're real confident, eh? Mm. Going into that the two thousand nineteen um uh finals and um uh, but then we just felt like we just made it harder for ourselves. Yeah. The game was like real close. Yeah. Um, especially when Cooper went off and that as on we had that bin. yeah, ten in the bin, we had twelve on. Um we spoke about a full one. Lucky we had Jake Friend on where he came on and just covered like pretty much did Cooper's job and probably some of my job as well <laughs> <laughs> when I was on. So yeah, like well, it was a mad week leading into it. Um but yeah, it was a bit different to the Melbourne one. Melbourne was like a lot of nerves and it was like, fuck, you know, we're gonna go against Cameron Smith, Slater, yeah. and all that stuff. And you go, and you look at the camera, I was like, yeah, that's some pretty good side, but we still had a, we had yeah, a crazy gun side. side. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we were just like pretty confident, like, you know, you know we can win it, mm. win it again. And so, yeah, the, the fi- obviously the final happens and the defense that you guys had on your goal line, like, can you remember it all? Like, what the feeling like was out there, or do you remember the feeling of when Tr- Latrell did that flick pass? Or yeah, yeah, bro, I was like, I was on. Yeah, I was on the field when Latrell's on, and um, bro, we're all, bro, we're fucked. Yeah, you'd been you defended like four or five yeah, sets yeah. or something like that. We're struggling. Like, I remember, like, I don't know who I was looking. I was looking at one of the forwards. I was like. Brother, get back by play three. And he was like, you go. <laughs> I was like. The good old you go. I was like, bro. And then we started looking at the back rollers. And said, hey, you guys go and get a carry or something. Yeah. Right, and then that, we don't we don't actually say much to Border because he'll end up doing that anyways. Yeah. Um, but we start looking around and start, we're going to tell him, get someone, one of the halves who go and take a carry for us. Right. And Crazy. then that then that play happens with Boydo. And then they go on the, on the you know, short side and they yep. break the line and they score. Where I was like the best feeling, like when Teddy scored, just gave us that bit of like, like man, like just relax and like give us a bit of energy to like get our breath back. Yep, yeah, that's all we needed. Yeah, um, it's uh how like poetic almost that it was Boyd Cordner that took that tough yeah, carry. Yeah, yeah, like that's that's what his career was and made on. Yeah, that's that's his carry. Like that's a Boydo carry. Yeah, straight behind the rock, quick yep. play the ball, and then you just play off it. It's crazy. So yeah, Teddy goes over. And you're thinking in your head, we're about to go back to back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Yeah. Bro, when, when Teddy scored, I, like, we all looked at the time and I was like, we had like five more minutes left and we're like, bro, let's just stay up now. We just got to stay up and then just hold the ball and that's it. Yep. Sharks, man. But yeah, that was good. Buzzer goes. Yeah, buzzer goes, bro. We just started like, I, I remember they were like, um, they had the ball and it was like last minute and they would just keep throwing the ball and we were like, oh, cook, bro. We were like running this side and they were shifting there and they were all like yep. going back here. And then like, um, I think they passed it to one of their players and they're like, I tackled him and then he dropped the ball. Yeah. Like he went to go kick it, but then I tackled him and he dropped it. Yeah. And I just, <clears throat> I had no energy. I just laid there <laughs> and I looked at the time and the hooter went, Joey started sprinting off yep. to his family and I just laid. I was like, ah, oh, bro, come on again. It. So I was good, like, bro. Yeah. So good. Uh, and so like for you for you personally like i i really would like enjoyed especially like probably like maybe 18 19 where you progressed into like a player that was running for like 250 you know meters yeah, yeah. like wh- how did you go from a center to a player that was you know running for the most meters of a lot of the forwards in the comp and getting through so much work you know 24 tackles zero misses 223 meters offloads you know what i mean like how do you think you got to that point i've always like um like not to be cocky but i've always been fit yep um and um what's it called when i once i was introduced to the middle it was just about me trying to get used to being in the middle yeah um I, i've always had that engine i've always like i can i'll keep going mm. but it was about like can i keep tackling yeah like running, oh, there's no problem with me running. It's just like, can I tackle, get up, third man, get back? Yeah. Then I got used to it. Um, yeah, and it took me a couple of years. Mm. Like even 2015 when I got introduced to the middle. Like I was like, could only last probably 20 minutes. And then Robert was like, yep. get off he, and then go back on like last 10. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it took me a couple of years to like get to that point where I just felt comfortable being in the middle. Yeah. And I can run those meters and tackle. Yeah. Um, yeah, it takes, man takes ages eh well it's like 
it's crazy to think you went from 20 minutes to there were games where you'd play like 70 minutes yeah, or yeah. sometimes even 80. 80. Um, wasn't there a game this year where they accidentally subbed you, like did they accidentally didn't sub you off or whatever and you played 80 minutes or was that someone else? Yeah, yeah. No, there were minutes, I was meant to come off, <laughs> but they, Lindsay ended up running off. <laughs> we like, bro, where are you going? <laughs> yeah, he was like, we both, we both stood on the, like, on the sideline and Lindsay was like, what are you doing? And I was like, nah, he called me. And he was like, nah, he called Linz. <laughs> and I was like, the fuck? So I, bro, I literally just ramped and it was like, it was literally just about to be play three. So yeah. I literally just ran back straight on, got the carry and like kept going. Yeah. And then like Robert blew up. <laughs> Robert blew up because like, he was like, what the, what the hell is that dude still out there? Like, you know, he looked like he was cooked, but like yeah. he, he should have been off. Lindsay mm. was meant to stay on. But then I ended up like, I ended up playing well. Yeah. Like when I stayed on longer. Yeah. Um, and then Robert just left me throughout the whole game. Yeah. <laughs> so funny. Yeah. Bro. And afterwards, what are you doing? What are you doing? afterwards, I was like, Lindsay, bro, like, what are you doing? And I was like, nah, he said Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> and then Robert came and I was like, what the fuck were you doing? <laughs> and I was like, you're meant to stay on. You're meant to come off. Yeah. Yeah. Far out. That was, uh, yeah, it's hilarious. When I think it was in the post match press conference when Robbo was like, yeah, <laughs> he wasn't supposed to stay on. He yeah, wasn't yeah. supposed to stay on. Bro, I was like struggling to get back. And I was like, once I heard my, like, once I heard my name, because they called me like C, yep. and he probably thought they called like Linz. Linz, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or even like Linz C. Yeah, yeah. Linz and they were like, oh yeah, yeah, like, I think it was B-Moz. B-Moz was like C. And then I turned around and started running up, and then I seen Lindsay running off as well. Sucks, but there was only one person standing there waiting to come on. Oh, yeah, no. well, that's fucking how yeah, good. And then what's funny is like you ended up playing really well, which is um, yeah. Like do you the, enjoy longer minutes? Do you? Th or? I, I feel like um, the longer I play, like then I once I get my groove and then yeah, getting to yeah. the game and like yeah, find yeah. the rhythm and then of once it. Once I get my second win, then yeah. I just like bro, I can just keep going. Because like it's so hard coming off the bench. People don't realize that like in a game, if you if you stay on for the whole game, you can begin to see like who's not good laterally, who gets back, as in like the defense, yeah, yeah, yeah. who gets back a bit lazy, who doesn't hit with their shoulder, who moves, like who's hitting yeah, with exactly. their arms. Yeah, yeah. Whereas when you come off the bench, you don't get that information. Nah. You don't know. Um, so yeah, like it's such a different, like it's so like good bench players are so impressive because they yeah, do yeah. really well at that. And then obviously longer, longer minute players. Yeah. So obviously the decision to, um, to, to sign with Catalans and, and not stay in the NRL, how did that come about? Like, you know, you had so much success at the Roosters. We had that yeah. all come down. I was like, um, it's, it's when when the when the comp got moved over to um, Queensland. Yeah. And uh, I just remember I was like, bro, I had like calf injuries, hammy, quad. I was like, once one injury getting better, yeah, and another one pops up. Your body starts unbalancing. Yeah, yeah. And then I was just like, I feel like my body's just like it's done. Yeah. You know, especially the way we play at the Roosters. Mm. Um, and then I was just like, probably it's better if I just go. You know, go to Super League and just relax for a bit, um, and that's where it all started. And that's where it all started. And I just started talking to Canlands, um, and just told him, you know, I'm pretty keen to come over. Mm. Um, yeah, and they 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 were pretty keen to get me over as well. So yeah, yeah, we started you know negotiating, started talking, and then things that all went you know went to plan. Got it done. Yeah. Was it what was the um was it a tough to chat with Robbo like the to, or was it you know you kind of already knew that. That was a way you were going to go. I uh, I felt like um. No, nah, when I when I was talking to Robbo, like he was pretty. I felt like he probably knew as well mm. that it was probably my time's coming up. Yep. And um, yeah, so it was pretty like. Yeah. It wasn't like you know, it was like fuck. You sure you want to go? You probably got another. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it was like, to him, it was like, yeah, sweet, that's cool. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So it was like it was pretty straightforward, and I told him like, this is what I want to do. Yep. I feel like I can't keep delivering for your team. I don't want to let you guys down. Mm. It's probably better off that I just move on. Yeah. Um, so he understood where I was coming from. Yeah. But he probably also thought like, yeah, you know, you've got all these injuries that you're carrying. Yeah. And that as well. So. Man, what a run! What a run! Yeah. It's like as again, like as as you get further away from your career, I'm sure you're gonna look back on it and go that. Yeah, yeah. Crazy, like bro. like in the end of the year review, like um, we sat there, bro. We literally just talk about from 2015 to 2020. Uh, no, no, 2022. Just about like you know. Do you remember when you when you first came in? Like, like the different person you are? Yeah, yeah. Like, you remember when you first came in? And he, the dot, he goes, remember when I drew this? Oh, did that? And I was like, Phew. I was That's just like crazy. buzzing out. I was like, I'm surprised you still remember. And I was like, yeah, I still remember. I still remember like our first meeting. Then I told you, you're like, you know, you either do that or I just send you back home. Mm. And I was like, and then you look at you now. 
Mm. You know, ten, like eight years later, you're leaving with two rings, you go to Catalans. You know, like, who knows, you might you might end up coming back. Yeah. So I was like, fuck, I don't know. I don't know, <laughs> I might come back. I, don't I know. mean, the wine's looking pretty good over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, I was like, oh, the, the lifestyle there looks a lot more relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> um, fuck, what a crazy journey. Um, I mean, and, and what's, you know, impressive <coughs> as well is like, you got a whole other journey, boxing. You, yeah, you yeah. made your boxing debut. Is boxing something you've always enjoyed or is it something that you slowly grew, like, you know, you grew into or? I've, yeah, look, I've, I've always enjoyed um, boxing, but I was always like, I was doing like, um, like mixed martial arts mm. or like um, just a bit of conditioning and try to stay in good shape. Stuff, yeah, 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 yeah. Like um, when I was at the Warriors, like our wrestling coach, he owned an MMA gym in um, Auckland MMA. So that's where I used to go train. Yeah. So during the like, off season, I'll just go then, you know, just do cardio and do conditioning. Mm. Um, and then I just like, I finally like fell in love with it. Mm. Um, and that's when, you know, I've, and I've always wanted to jump in the ring. Yeah. But I was just hard with the footy, yeah. the footy stuff. And then until I remember it was like a year, like, yeah, it was last year um, after the, it was a Paul Gallon and um, the Lussick. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I met George Rose at the the sports bar. We were, we were having a chat and then we were like, bro, can you jump in? And you, it was like, bro, that's all shit, bro, that's all shit. Because <laughs> like a lot of people come up to me and go, bro, chuck me in the ring, bro, yeah. I'm keen. Yeah. The next thing you know, yeah, sweet, you're fighting. And you're like, they start like, oh nah, like look, bro, I'm a bit busy, <laughs> and that, yeah. So I was like, bro, I'm I'm keen as I'm yep. keen as, and then spoke all like Dennis, and then like, bro, and then a year later, got me to fight. But uh, the funny thing is, like, I was meant to fight in December. Yeah, like, they were meant to have an event in December, and I was like in England, four o'clock in the morning. I'm like there to sleep, mm. and I get this phone call. It was like, I had eight missed calls, and I looked at the phone it was still ringing, and it was like Dennis, and he raised me. I was like, bro. Need you to fight next week. I was like, bro, you know I'm still here in England, eh? And it's like, yeah, but like this is the only opportunity you can get now. Yeah. I was like, super. I'm, you know, I bought my flight. Um, we ended up flying out that night. That night landed the, like the next day or so. Straight did the blood test. Started training. Um, where Paul Gallon trains. So when, like straight off the flight. So you land in Australia. Yeah, we landed. I, I landed like seven o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Land at seven o'clock in the morning. I told Mrs. Bro, here's money. You guys taxi home. You guys go home. I went and picked up my ute from my dad's house, and then like went straight did the blood test, um, did that, and then went straight out to um, yeah training. Went straight to training. I was booked <sighs> in for a ten o'clock session. Yuck. The training, and then it was like, then I got another call of Dennis. Hey, bro, you need to get you some shoes, get you some shorts. I was like, sweet. I had to drive out to like some place. Started looking for shoes and that. It was, Bro, that day was just like a torture. Oh, bro. <laughs> I was and trying around falling asleep. I was like, bro. Because you, you've you been in seven weeks in, in London. Yeah, yeah. Uh, England, sorry. And that's <coughs> the time zone is the essentially time. flipped. Yeah, exactly. Like it's 11 hours or whatever behind. So it's yeah. basically like when it's nine at night, it's not or whatever. So it's flipped. So it's your body clock would be fucking yeah, totally yeah. destroyed. But I was still like, bro, I was still like, I was jet lagged <coughs> when, I, when I got off. But I was like, Cause I was so keen to do it, yeah. and it was the only opportunity. Mm. I was like, "Bro, it's next week. I just get it done." Yep. Um, when what's what I find interesting is like, when was the last time you did some actual proper boxing training before this fight? Because you wouldn't have had a chance to in season. Not during the season. Yeah. I was literally like, um, bro, like during the season, I was doing like some, but just pads. That's it. Conditioning. Just yeah, like yeah, bro. Conditioning. Yeah. Just, just try to stay it's in good shape. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Um, no sparring. Yeah, like, which is like where you get all of your good experience. That's where, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Because um, I look like a hero on the pads, but yeah, I get yeah, in yeah. the ring, and cat. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I reckon you'd be mad. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like, um, bro, I literally didn't do like, it's. I literally started doing proper training when I got into Manchester. Okay. Like, yeah, yeah, they, um, Pete and um, Dennis linked <clears> me up with, with a bloke over there and we started doing like, bro, we literally only did like three training sessions. Which is nothing, like yeah. nothing. Like, and, but it wasn't like mean training, it was just like pads and technique and that as well. But we were still building for December. Okay. Still building for December. And he was like, brother, you know what? You're locked in for sparring next week. And I was like, sweet. <laughs> then that's when we won. That's when we met the quarters and that game was in London. So mm. I was like, bro, I can't attend because I'm going to London. Yeah, yeah. So he was like, all right, oh. do you want to come back? And I was like, 
I don't know. Like, I'll come back if we win that game. Because then, like, um, I think the next game was over Manchester. Mm. We ended up losing. Then I was like, bro, I'm not coming back. <laughs> like, I'm going, <laughs> go on, I'm going to stay here for another week. Okay. And then that's when the call came through. Okay. And he was like, bro, you're fighting next week. I was like, bro, I haven't even done any training or sparring. 100. I, 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 that's crazy that you took it on. Yeah. Like, and it was like, bro, that's the thing. It's the only opportunity you got. Yeah, like, yeah. There's no more, like, event that's going on. Yeah. So it's either next week or you just had to wait for another year. And I was like, like sweet, I'll see you. I'll, I'm, I'll, fly, I'll fly out t t tonight and I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> and I was like, all right, sweet, bro. Are you sure, bro? Are you sure? <laughs> I, I'm sure, bro. I'll see you tomorrow. Because, like, it's not just a week normal. It's yeah, a week yeah. of travel and jet lag. And yeah. you've just played a World Cup. Like, it's insane. Bro. Yeah. Insane. And literally, like, when I hung up, was like, I was like, fuck, I'm fighting next week. <laughs> yeah. I walked on. in the room and Miss was like, who's calling you at this time? I was like, well, I'm fighting next week. He's like, what? Are you, you're fighting? And I was like, yeah. He goes, well, you're fighting December. I was like, nah, it's next week. <laughs> oh, so start packing out. our bags. We've got to fly out. <laughs> and we're not talking like sparring, 16 ounce gloves, head yeah, yeah. We're talking Bro, eight, I was literally ounces. straight to 10 ounce gloves, 10 or eight. I was just like, oh. Yeah, and they were like, oh, how, how, how have you um been going off the sparring? That's like one of the other trainers. I was like, bro, I didn't do any sparring over there. Far out. And so you get you, you get in, and obviously your opponent is low, who's had two fights already. Um, what was it like walking out? Were you nervous? Were you like, this is this is great, I love it. Bro, you know the funny thing? Throughout that whole week, I was like nervous. Yeah. The day of the fight, it was like, I don't know. I just felt relaxed. Yeah. Even walking out, I was just like, like, I'm here. Is what it is. Yeah, it is what it is now. But literally, like, every night, bro, I was, like, thinking, like, this dude might knock me out, like, this and that. I even switched them up. And, like, you know, on YouTube and here, like, a few fights. Yeah. A few fights, like, in, you know, in the NRL. Yeah. Um, bro, and he was, like, knocking blokes out. I was like, oh, shucks. Oh, shit, he can Then try. I've seen him at the um, press conference. Bro, he was, like, unit. Big boy. Yeah, he was huge, bro. Yeah. But, bro, he's, like, he's a good bloke, like, nice bloke. And then, um, yeah, I was just like, fuck, this dude's massive, bro. And I was, I was trying to stand up and, like, walk next to him. <laughs> and I was like, man, he was taller than me, bigger than me. I was like, holy shit. And, like, I think as a, like, just from a very layman perspective, I feel like as a rookie boxer, reach is, like, the hardest thing to, like, yeah, yeah. get through. Like, that's yeah. something that experience, but you don't worry, like, not that you don't worry about reach, but, like, if, it was, if you're a rookie boxer, reach is like the hardest puzzle to solve because you're yeah, like, yeah. I can't get into his reign yeah, without yeah, yeah. getting clipped. And so like that would make you nervous as yeah, shit. Yeah, no, I did. Because yeah. like, the thing is like, I never done any sparring. Mm. So I never got that like... The range. like Bro, that range yeah. or like get hit. Yeah. So I was just like, bro. And I could see him like always loading up and I was like, bro, this is going to try to knock me out. <laughs> and so he was, was doing massive yeah, yeah. over here. And when he comes, bro, I was just like full swing and then yeah. the hook. Yeah. And then like once I see him come, bro, I'll just start charging backwards. There. I'll just start moving yeah. backwards straight onto the ropes. Yep. Um, but yeah, bro, I'm, I'm just glad I got through a sweet and one. So I'll, this is a question. What's more enjoyable? A game of footy or a boxing win? Oh. Because the adrenaline would be crazy from winning a boxing fight. Yeah, yeah, bro. I'll, but I'll say a boxing win. Yeah, yeah. Just the adrenaline of it all. Being at the races, bro, winning like, like we win most of the time. Yeah, it's like normal. Yeah, and you're like, you, you don't, you don't really celebrate. Mm. You know, you're going again the next week. Yeah, you know, boxing is like you train like six weeks for that one fight. Yeah, and it's literally just you, you and the other bloke. You just go into the ring, fight. Yeah, you win. It's like, bro, it's like mad. Oh man! So when I won, like I didn't even go out like to leave. Like I was already in there drinking, like in the change room. <laughs> but I didn't get changed. Sat down. Dennis came with beers. I was like, "Bro, bring the beers." Okay. We just started drinking, watching the fire. I was like, "Bro, I don't leave. Like I'm enjoying this." Yeah, it wouldn't mind. Yeah, yeah. I was like, "Fuck, yeah, the best." And footy is like a little bit different too, because it's like because it is a week to week thing. Yeah, as you exactly. Said. It's yeah. like a week to week thing, so you can't get too caught up no. in wins kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. Whereas like boxing, you're gonna fight three times a year max. Yeah, like yeah, max. yeah. And you want to win, bro. Like every oh, fight. Hundred percent. Um, like, did you do you feel like you've gotten the bug now though? Like you love it so much, you want to do more fights. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, man, I'll be keen to like jump in the ring, and um, I think they're like about to have an event in Feb. Mm. Um, if only Super League started a little bit later, I would have been keen to like jump on board on that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just a mad experience, eh? For mm. the whole week. Yeah, we'd love to. We'd love to get back in there. So, you, is the kind of plan next year when the Super League ends, get back in the ring? Yeah, yeah, 
Yep. Like if they if they have an event, I'll love to like fly back and jump in the ring. Yep. Um. Yeah. Get in there and then just head back. What's the what's something that like a lot of people may not realize about being in the ring in a professional boxing match? Like, is it is it the eerie quiet? Is it the crowd? Is it the you know what, what's what's the feeling like in there that people may uh, not like? Know? Yeah, obviously the crowd, but it's like quiet. Or yeah, it's quiet, but you'll hear like maybe ten people like shouting out. But the worst is like when no one's shouting out your name. And they're shouting out like, Deferred, yeah, like, I remember when I was fighting him and everyone was calling him like, go knock him out, knock him out. Lord. And all I heard, bro, I swear to God, all I heard was like my wife. And I I sat down and I just turned around and like, I, didn't, I wasn't even sure as her. Yeah. But when I sat down, I looked over because I could hear someone, only one person calling my name. <laughs> I looked over and it was my wife. She was sitting down there and I was just like, fuck, bro. I was like, fuck, this is like, bro, this is weird. Yeah. And that because like, yeah, everyone's all cheering for him. Um, and then nothing is just like, bro, you need to like stay relaxed in there. Yeah. But if you're going to go and try and knock someone out, you'll get gassed. Yeah, 100%. Did you speak to anyone before the fight? Like, bro, the only person I advice? spoke with, um, <clears throat> I look like, yeah, the, like coaches and that, but um, Paul Gallen, mm. I spoke to him um, like before the, before the weigh in. Um, I think one of my press conference, I said, bro, I'm going to knock this dude out round two. <laughs> 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 and, um, I mean, and he came up to me, I was like, I know, like, you know, we'll be mad to knock him out, but just get the win. Yeah. So if you win by points, who cares? You won. Yeah. I was like, oh, sweet, bro. That's all people remember. Yeah, yeah. And you go, that's all. And it's your first fight. You want to you wanna remember this first fight. You yeah. Know, you want to remember that you won. Not going there and getting gassed and then you get knocked out. 100. And, like, that's the, in my opinion, the biggest error a lot of, like, rookie boxers make is they think they go in that first minute yeah, or yeah, two yeah. to yeah. knock someone yeah. out. And then they I, don't fight well for the rest of the fight. Yeah, because I had a few blokes there come up to me like, bro, look at um, Damon Lowe, you know, he's big, you'll get gassed. But at the same time, I reckon if, if he catches me, oh. bro, one of one of his like so overhand, big. bro, it could rattle me. Night, night. Yeah, and then you'll probably just start teeing off. Yeah. And I was like, fuck. So I, I, at, on the fight, I was like, I'm not trying to knock him out. I was just trying to like, just trying to win. Yeah, but be smart as well. <laughs> well, it's it's. I think like because boxing, you know, we we love to see block uh, knockouts, and knockouts that. and that. But it's a sport. Yeah, exactly. It's, you 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 get points. Yeah, yeah. And I think people don't realize that. Like you you're not you, you, knockouts are a bonus in yeah, boxing. Yeah. You're supposed to win the fight. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so yeah, like that. That's something that like a lot of rookies. I feel like they go in there just fucking swinging for the swinging. fences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, bro, like you got so many minutes to yeah, sort yeah. this out. Um. And so, so like, next fight, who like, it, would you like to fight another footy player, or would you like to fight another young rookie boxer or whatever? I feel like that's where, bro. I feel like that's where like the money's at, eh? Like mm. forty players. Yeah. Um. So I, I would love to like fight like another forty player. Um. I've seen Junior Paulo's name, you know, being tossed up, um, a couple of times. So I think like if I was ever gonna get an opportunity to fight Junior Paulo, I think it would be mad. Massive. Um. Samoa Tonga. Samoa Tonga oh, will be good for like, you know, both, you know, Pacific Pacific Nation. Mm. Um, not just that, like, you know, we get to bring our people together, mm. you know, watch, um, you know, watch a mad event. Um, yeah, because like afterwards, like I respect the bloke, Junior. Yeah, you know, he's a legend. On the field. Yeah. I don't know him that well, but he just looks like, like a he's a giant gentleman. 100%. And that bro. as well, like legend. the, yeah, nicest bloke. Yep. Um, but yeah, like... Um, Bro, if I get opportunity to fight Junior Paulo, bro, there's no way I'll be saying no. Wow. Because I'll know what it'll bring. I would pay a lot of money to see yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. What so a fight. That would be mad. Holy. Yeah. So I know you can throw in that as well. Like, yep. I know he's a, he's a good fighter. He's a good well, boxer. technically, I believe he's used two of the best technically currently that I've seen box that are footy players. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Out yeah, of yeah. all the, the footy player fighters, I think that used two technically are the best. So, yeah, like, yeah. it would be a fucking great yeah, fight. Yeah, yeah. It would be a mad fight. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Hopefully, No Limit can organise something. Oh, hopefully, those boys! They'll organise something. Yeah, yeah. If not, nah, they will. Cause they started talking about it. Eh? <laughs> I was like, bro, if only I, um, if only I still had like one more year at the Roosters, so we can like try sort it out. Um, but yeah, like I, I know, I don't know if, if I go to plans, bro, I'll be keen. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 kind of perfect for both years because it gives you a whole year to you know do some technical training on the yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the fight will be even better. Yeah, technically. yeah. The only th like only thing that got 
clashes is like because like they're not having any more international games yeah yeah oh they're all at the end of the year so i think they're trying to move it to end of the year yeah okay um that's the only like downside about it um Mate, i mean I, I think the like a fight like that surely you could build a card around that and put it in maybe like january or something you know yeah 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 because that yeah. would give you both the chance to do it or even like if the games are like in you know, october mm. it'll only be like three games so like say like mid october to like november yeah but then you got like december like if they got like i don't know like late december where you can like do an event before yeah. heading into Christmas. For sure, for sure. That, where Jan is like, it'll be hard for me because I'll... Oh, you'll Kat be Lans, pre-season. Catalans will be like, bro, get oh. on the flight and hurry up and come here. True, Start true. Training. My bad, my bad. I was thinking of bloody um, this year where everyone's coming back a bit later. Uh, mate, I would... Oh, man, I'd love to see that. As yeah, I said, yeah. like, you know, it, it it would be so good. The, the build-up you could do around it in regards to like yeah, Samoa yeah. Tonga thing, Tonga. but yeah, in yeah, a exactly. positive way as well. Positive, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that'd be like sick, all, bro. But it would be mad if, like, <laughs> most of the cards is, like, Tonga versus Samoa. Oh, bro. be hectic. You know, you got, like, some Tonga, some Tonga, like, Tonga boys from this team, yeah. Samoan team. You know, they start, like, you know, start fighting. Bro, we'll bring a mad crowd. The Everyone will love to, like, and not just that, like, and bring everyone together and just, like, celebrate. Yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, maybe then me and Junior can top it off at the end. Bro, that'd be hectic. So hectic. I as i said i'll pay big 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 money to watch that yeah um have you have you th- like you're not at, at the end of the career at all yet but what's the uh, do you plan anything for post-career in the sense of like is there anything that excites you or or you're more well, focused I've always like focus? yeah I've, you know what like 2015 is when i started getting into investment properties yep so when i started like that's when yeah i bought my first property in 2015 um and i like i kind of fell in love with it yeah Bro, but then like it's always like putting on the deposit for every property was like things so like um i don't know like that's that's what i feel like after 40 i just i, I see myself like just investing into like properties and that and yeah i don't see myself working there eh? yeah like not like if i'm like talking about working like say construction and then that i think that's the last thing i want to be doing it is trust me bro, I like <laughs> my dad's done it my 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 brother's done it and i know like bro when they come home they're in so much pain yeah bro like they struggle to like walk their knees their back carrying like so much stuff and that um so yeah like after 40 like yes yeah, like investment yeah there's something yeah that i'd like to get into what is it is it what's the enjoyment of it is it like you know getting something and and getting the value of it and, and understanding you know what's the good area is is that the excitement that you would like about it yeah it's like more like buying the right property yeah and then you're getting good rental income yeah and then like say a couple of years later there's like equity in it yeah so i had a melbourne property that i bought for 420 mm. um literally a year and a half later someone wanted to buy it off me for 680. <sighs> Wow. So that's like 200k profit like yeah, plus yeah. yeah um well, i couldn't say no to that yeah. so i was like sweet i sold it to this lady mm. over in melbourne and then i took that and then i went and bought like another property yeah um so yeah it's more like that or like i just want to live off the rental income yep um if i can use equity to close this property mm. and then just live off that um, yeah yeah i am the worst property investor in the history of mankind i'll tell you why I was like 21 years old. Everyone yeah. told me to like, you got to buy a house. You got to buy a house. I was on like 50K a year, like oh, fucking bro. nothing. Like anyway, so I, <laughs> I might be the only man in Australia whose house was less by the time I sold it. Yeah, yeah. So I bought like a fucking, it's just a, not off the plan, nice little <coughs> villa in Callum Vale. Um, had it for like 10 or 12 years. Yeah, yeah. And sold it for like 10 or ten or 20 grand less. Yes. And I was like, I'm literally the worst investor in yeah, the country. Yeah. The worst investor in the country. Yeah. I'm never doing this again. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I could, and I, was, I got rid of it because I was like, this is going nowhere. It's not going up. But what's crazy, it's like, it's new. It, I think it's because it was in an area that like, so it, there were new apartments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then all, there's all other new apartments around, around it. Around it. And so it kept getting more new apartments. So it's like, why would you buy this one that's 10 years old yeah, yeah. when there's a three-year-old one just down the road for the same price or yeah, whatever? Yeah, true, true. So... Don't get invite, uh, investment advice from me. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, well, I, I won Dally M Worst Investor yeah. last year. Bro, you get a lot of those, like, even, like, family members, <clears throat> like, especially Polynesian. Mm. Bro, like, 
when you sign an NRL contract, like they think you're on a mill. Yeah. Right, they think you're on a mill. Like just because you sign an NRL contract, <laughs> oh, no. and you know the first the first thing they say to you is like, go buy a house. Yeah. But like, you can be on like on fifty k, seventy five k. Yeah. But first things first, you got to put down a ten percent deposit. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And it's like fuck. And if you're on fifty k, bro, you can't put down a ten percent profit or like deposit yeah. for like, yeah, right for like a good house. Hundred percent. And also, like, if you don't get a contract the next year, you're yeah, yeah, exactly. Fucked. You're fucked. And you gotta try <laughs> find a way to try pay that off. Yeah, mate. It was, as I said, worst investment I ever yeah. fucking did. It was so bad, bro. <laughs> so bad. Um, now ask all the boys this: favorite rapper of all time? Tupac. Tupac. Yeah. Do you think we'll ever see another one like with the impact that he like he was so far before his time? Like we're talking about stuff that he was talking about 50, uh, 25 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Craziness. No, I don't think we'll. No. Hey, yeah. 26. He did 26 when he passed. He was so young. Yeah, he was still young, bro. Fucking crazy, bro. Yeah. Um, oh, he, his CD is the first CD ever bought. The greatest hits. Yeah. I was in grade six. Yeah, yeah. Thought I was so gangster, bro. <laughs> bro, we're like um back in New Zealand, like you know those tape, the tape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we used to like, like at the time, like the CDs um stuff wasn't like wasn't out yet, but we had the tape. So like we used to like press rewind and play <laughs> rewind like a certain part. And I remember I plugged it into the speaker and I was playing like, like um his music. Yeah. And then like some of the swords came on. Then my mum came in. <laughs> bro, mum came in and grabbed the tape and full like snapped it. No. But that like all that that tape like just had like all his like songs in that. Yeah. Bro, and I was just like, bro, I was like, I started crying, eh? <laughs> I started crying, man. Because I used to take that to school and we used to like, lunchtime, yeah. like we used to just like grab the aux cord and just plug it in and just like sit there. Yeah. Just, we just, just start listening to it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was my favorite. Man, Dear Mama is probably my favorite yeah, song. Yeah, yeah, if you, yeah. If you hear that song and it doesn't get you a bit emotional. Yeah, exactly. I don't want to hear it, bro. You're yeah. not a human being to me. Um, when I first heard Hit Him Up, I was scandalized yeah yeah <laughs> i was like bro what did he just say? holy shit um anyway yeah two back gun uh favorite, <coughs> favorite movie of all time favorite movie um oh, every of the titans yeah goat movie yeah. goat movie um bro thank you so much for coming on the show i appreciate oh, good, it man thank um, you mate good luck over in france it's beautiful i'm telling you yeah yeah nah, i'm excited man can't yeah. wait oh, thanks man. for having me brother appreciate, appreciate it, it. brother